Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Calyx, the um, weekly Cthulhu show in which we've got there's rotating players and rotating keepers. This week, I, Ash Minnick, am your keeper. We are playing a scenario from Mansions of Madness uh, by Chaosium as the publisher. I'm very excited. And let's go ahead and introduce the players so you can get to know them. First off, we have the uh, lovely, amazing, talented Becca Scott. Hello, Ash Minnick. Hello, Becca. Thank you so much for hosting the Calyx this week. Oh I, goodness. one of Thanks. the producers of the Calyx, am very grateful for this. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm very grateful to be here. I'm excited. Um, and we are all grateful to Chaosium for sponsoring this show. If you want to help make... The, this is episode number 22. If you want it to go on for infinity, you can help by purchasing Chaosium's lovely products. They have so much awesome stuff at chaosium.com and you can get 10% off if you use our discount code, which is somewhere above my head, Calyx2021. And that's it. And do you want do you want to know who I'll be playing today? Yeah, yeah, that's let's not, go that's ahead. Not Tell the voice. me what's well, it, I it, it, that's okay. So, uh, yeah, what is your character's name and maybe her profession? Yes. Well, I go by Mimble, Mimble Buckworth. I am currently located in New York City, New York, and I am a gemologist and a jeweler. Yes, I I love to see what's going on when the prisons of light enter a gym. It's my fascination. I also like very shiny and expensive things. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Hmm. All right. So let's meet our other players. Uh, we also have with us uh, this evening, Monique. Oh, Monique, you are muted. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Hi, thanks. My name is Monique. I go by Game Freak Geek Girl on Twitch. And I talk about board games. And today I get to play my first game of Call of Cthulhu. So thank you so much for inviting me today. And I am Edith Ann Smythefield, but I go by Edie. And you see, Edie is uh, a bit of a writer. And she doesn't, I don't know why I went cockney with that. Ignore all of that accent. Edie is a writer. <laughs> <laughs> She's just kind of, um, just a very like kind of in her own world, like kind of floating off into staring off into nothingness, but generally quite useless in terms of the family. But she does good pretty well for the, her books on her own. But she's a little heiress that has little to do with life except for write her books and follow whatever curiosity takes her. Love that. Love that. All right. Um, and our third and final player, Erica. Bye bye. Hi. I'm Erica. I'm playing Jennifer Smallwood. Um, I'm returning, the dilettante. Uh, from the last time I was on this show. Yes, um, when I tortured you. Yes. Oh, yeah, back by popular demand, <laughs> Jennifer Smallwood. <laughs> the uh, the shoe wielding, you know, shotgun toting dilettante. Love that. I love that for you. Um, and I love that for us. Thank you. All right. So yeah, I guess let's jump right in. Um, for those who are interested, we're playing a scenario called the 19th hole. Um, it takes place in Scotland in September of 1928. Our, our, our three, um, lovely ladies here have just been on a boat, a, uh, ocean liner coming over from America. Um, and they, they're all friends. They've, they've been traveling together to visit a mutual acquaintance, um, just outside of Dundee, Scotland, Mrs. Uh, McMillan. Uh, so upon arrival, however, in Glasgow, after their, their journey, they find a newspaper article, um, about, about the McMillans that, that gives them, uh, some unexpected information. So yeah, so now they're in Glasgow and they're about to take uh, a train ride to Dundee and then a car ride to the McMillan's estate. Um, but let's 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 see what these young ladies have to chat about on their e -E. journey. Ginny, Edie, I I believe I found the most dreadful newspaper or article here. Gather round, gather know. round. Yes. Oh, oh, I promise I'm not seasick. I know we've been at sea for months, but it, it's fine. 
Uh, it says Dundee. Police are calling for the help of farmers and tenants northeast of the city after the disappearance of Mr. Arthur McMillan. Could it be our very own Arthur McMillan? Oh dear. He's recently in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mr. McMillan, aged 64, moved into Crowwood Hall north of Abernight with his wife, Crystal McMillan, in May of this year. Shortly after their arrival, Mr. McMillan bought the derelict Thistledown Golf Club. Of course he did. Who wouldn't know this? Who'd be reading an article in the paper and not already know of the purchase? Anyway, um... Shortly after their arrival, Mr. McMillan bought the derelict, yes, 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 began renovations, plans of reopening the club in the following year. But September 14th, that was just recently, Mr. McMillan left Crowwood Hall at noon to visit the renovation site. But throughout the course of the day, numerous workmen and the site foreman, Mr. Cameron Nairn, met with or saw Mr. McMillan. But at the end of the day, Mr. McMillan's car remained parked outside the club, with Mr. McMillan himself nowhere to be seen. Gone from the club. Oh, I can't read anymore. Please, 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 one of you. I should say it is, at this time, September 16th. Uh, you landed at in Glasgow about 9 a.m. and your train departed at about 10 a.m. So you are currently, it is the morning of September 16th. Yes, and that's right. I'm train sick now, not seasick. It's different. Yes, understandable, mm. darling. Here, let me finish. Um, let's see. It says, da -di -da, da -di -da -di -da -da. after the search of the premises, Mr. Narn telephoned the Dundee police, the McMillan direct, Mrs. McMillan directly. After 48 hours, she detailed the investigation at the Thistle Down Club. Police have officially declared Mr. McMillan missing. No. Detective no. inspectors William Black, I should write that down, and Michael McAndrew are now requesting farmers, tenants, and townsfolk in Abernite, Fowlis, and nearby townships to report any sighting of the American man in his early 60s of average hall tight and build with thinning white hair, wearing a navy tweed suit. Oh, navy's really not his color, is it? But uh, yeah. in using his cane topped with a silver ram's head. Mrs. McMillan is offering a substantial award. Well, of course, the darling. And then for information leading to Mr. McMillan's safe return. <gasps> How dreadful. Well, oh, how dare they dreadful. describe his hair as thinning? I found that dreadful too. That's rather rude of them. I don't think that was necessary. It absolutely was not necessary. Uh, he must be all right. Oh, poor Crystal. Oh, Crystal, darling. Indeed. Well, I dare say we're not going to the tulip fields now, are we? All I wanted was the tulip fields. I know, he was so proud of those tulip fields. The tulips, he kept writing about them. Hmm. Oh my. Um, just then, then the, door, the door opens and um, Edie's butler enters. Um, Ma'am, do you need anything? I, 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 I have questions. It, can we help? Um, help with that. But she just like shakes the paper. Like, oh. I mean, they're calling farmers and tenants. I dare say that we're more suited than farmers and tenants. Okay, Do you think so we he... would help you with the luggage, Summers? No. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. Oh, Summers. <laughs> oh, no, I am. Um, I'm sorry. I'm totally. Where Where is Summers from again? I'm just like Russia, right? Russia, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Obviously, Sorry. that <laughs> tall build, that the, square jaw. The Russian, the Russian and summers. That classic Russian name, summers. <laughs> <laughs> Mame, I know nothing of this article. I meant, can I help you? We are near the station. We need to get off the train. Oh yes, yes. Well, my notebook is um, it is um. Oh, summers. Where did I put my notebook? You put it in your blue bag, ma'am. Blue. Perfect. I remember this. because it goes with the blue pen I want to write with today. Thank you. Yes, today is blue day is what you said. You see, yes. I don't know what I'd do without summers. I can't keep track of my color days. It's very good. Yes. Anyway, we are at the station. We should exit the train. Oh, great. Oh. Would you mind with just this and this as well, Summers? Of I know course, of course. Yes, I keep and all the bags. And this as well, please. Yes, of course. I, I, okay. It would take me a couple of trips, but I, I have it. I have yes, it. you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so you guys exit the train. 
uh, Summers gets your bags and you guys uh, take your sort of final. You are now in um, Dundee um, and where you're headed uh, is the Crowwood Hall, which is outside of Dundee. Uh, Dundee itself, uh, even in the 1920s, is an unexpectedly um, uh, industrial city. It's, you know, it's it's unexpected because you don't really hear much about Dundee. You know, people always hear of Edinburgh and Glasgow, but Dundee's not really, you know, it's not really, it doesn't seem like a big city. However, it is a very big city. They've got museums, they've got, um, you know, a university, uh, but it's it's very much a very busy city. And as you drive out towards Crowwood Hall, um, you experience in the countryside a very different uh, landscape. It becomes very, very rural, small farms, small houses, etc. Just a very different feeling from Dundee. Um, and you both being, uh, you're all friends of the family. You know that this would be something that Crystal would very much appreciate, but her husband, um, you can't imagine him living in a place like this. Um, so I'm going to, let's see, show y'all your, your map, a map here. Oop. Um, so this is the map of um, sort of the area. Arthur, as you know, as, as Mrs. As Crystal McMillan has, has told you, so Arthur has basically moved back to his ancestral homelands. They're both from, from Pittsburgh. Um, and she's been pushing him to retire out here in these ancestral homelands. And he has bought a golf course, the Thistledown Golf Course. Um, but this is sort of the area that Crowwood Hall and the golf course and these lands are in. It's, it is very rural. Um, so you are traveling. Now you're traveling on this small road to the south where you see the number two. Um, passing the Queen's Head Pub, which is a large two-story pub, you know, very quaint but obviously like the, the pub for the area. Um, and then as you travel down uh, past the golf course itself, um, so traveling in front of the Thistledown Golf Club, the, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of gated off. There's a road, you know, that leads up to it. It's very, it doesn't look like there's anything up there. You know, it's very unkempt. Um, the road looks very, you know, the road you're on is fine, but the road towards Thistledown, even the sign pointing to Thistledown is 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 a bit old, um, a bit decrepit, and, and the road just doesn't look very well kept up. It's, it's clearly in disrepair. Um, and as you keep going down this small road, you uh, reach what is the driveway of um, Crow Wood Hall. The driveway itself is a mile long. So this is and it's lined with trees, a very, very different image. So it's uh, very, this is very well kept up. The gardens look amazing. The, you know, the trees are perfectly even along the roads. They're, they're um, clearly trimmed to be similar sizes and heights, et cetera. And as you're getting uh, closer to Crowwood Hall, it, it comes up, you know, in, in your view and it's, it's just beautiful. It's just, it's a very large, um, building um it's basically a mansion it's a scottish mansion um ah, and now out- this is more like it that golf course wow a true fixer-upper mm-hmm. but oh dear crystal this is going to be much too large for just her now don't say that arthur will be found he'll be found of course i sure hope so right Edie? you're hopeful aren't you Oh, yes, of course. And of course, like, I believe that Winters has a cousin or something I could loan over to give the extra helping hand around the house. I, 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 Summers, is Summer. I am, Winters Summers. was less the butler. Oh, I am, I am so sorry. I am Summers. Summers, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, it, maybe I could call Winters since he's no longer around. I'm sure she'll be all right, though. We'll find him, I'm sure. Winters is retired, ma'am. Oh, right, right. Thank you, Summers. I'll add that to my to-do list. I could ring up my sister Valerie and see if there's anyone in Hampshire that could come by. Oh, Come by? um, So as you pull up to the house itself, 
you see um, a gentleman standing outside. He looks to be about in his mid forties. Um, he has a, a thin mustache, gray hair. He's kind of a, a stout, portly fellow. Um, and he's smiling and his smile actually looks pretty sincere. He is immaculately dressed in tails. He's clearly the butler of Prowood Hall. Um, and he's, he's standing there very proper, very excited to have guests. Um, so your car- S- uh, Sir, excuse me. Uh, my door will not open itself. Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. So he comes over and he, he opens the doors. Ladies, ladies, it's so lovely to see you. Of course, Mrs. McMillan is so excited to see all of you. Very, oh, yes, 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 of course. <laughs> yes, and oh, a uh, 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 fellow journeyman. Yes, uh, I I did not know. It's fine. We'll make a room for you downstairs. No problem. No problem at all. No problem at all. Um, so, yes, uh, Miss McMillan is coming. If you would all, if you would all follow me, and uh, um, um, and he snaps, and and like a, a footman comes out and grabs your luggage and and takes it away. Um, and oh, and perhaps um, you you sir you should help with the. Yes, I help with the bags. Yes. Um, oh, I, yes. Sorry, I'm Keating. Keating, lovely, lovely Keating. Yes, I'm. I'm the butler of Crow Wood Hall. Um, lovely, lovely to meet you. Oh, but please, yes, Miss Miss McMillan is is Mrs. McMillan. Sorry, is um, as she's waiting inside for the three of you. Um, I, I, I should mention. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you've heard. Of what has happened oh, we recently. Know. Yes, we're yes. very, very <clears throat> well read. Yes, she's saw very. The article this morning. Yes, yes. Uh, she's very. Um, she's. She's not a normal self. Uh, you know, und- understandably, obviously, obviously. Is she yes. throwing things? N- n- no. Is that? Oh, good. Is it burned anything? No, no. Not to more lady it herself, of course. No, no, I'm... Perhaps you should come inside. You can and speak with her directly and, and all of your fears will be quiet. Hmm? Of course. Oh, um, Keating. Hmm. Uh, Mimble Buckworth. Uh, yes, uh, not, yes, Miss Buckworth, yes. Yes, I'm, of course, a guest, but also a gemologist and a jeweler, and I bring my supplies with me everywhere I go. So here is my card. Uh, oh, yes, yes, of course, um... It just says Mimble Buckworth, gemologist. That's all. He just sort of looks over it and looks at the back and is like, I shall keep it close. For any appraisals you may have, perhaps a family heirloom. Uh, yes, much appreciated, much appreciated. But if we could um, g- come in inside, yes. Just- and teaching, may I suggest a... a- Maybe could we get a tea set up? Uh, oh no! Like of we, course, of we course. Be... Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm, yes. You've read my mind. Um, uh, and and of course, of course. And our, our our cook Grant, she makes lovely scones. I should bring you scones and jam. And but, but we, should, we should go. We should yeah. go inside. Yes. Um. So he kind of goes to the door, the big beautiful door, and opens it for you, just waiting for y'all to come inside. Uh, Edith will uh, be scribbling away like as she's like just kind of taking notes of like everything around her and then she stops and like looks at him like fully for the first time and goes would you say your eyes are more cerulean or cornflower and then just continues to write notes as she walks inside and I rather see. love to oh she okay oh, um, Edie are you writing a new novel you know it's just that I thought I should take notes since this is all so exciting Yes, but, well, you promised me in your last novel that perhaps there'd be a gemologist, gemologist featured? Yes, yes. Oh, hmm. well, you know, sapphire, sapphire eyes. There we go. There we go. That's a good tie. Thank you, dear. I'm going to remember that. Excellent. On so, then. So inside the house is actually um, surprisingly modern. Um, it doesn't match... The sort of the the building itself is is maybe two hundred and fifty years old, something like that, and the interior decor does not match that. It's sort of an eclectic m- mishmash, clearly American, but it gives a very like romantic feel. It's not done poorly. It's actually quite impressive. Um, 
you know, and the decor has clearly been recently updated. The walls have been recently painted. In front of you is a large staircase with large mahogany uh, banisters and they're sort of waxed shiny. They don't look worn at all. Um, you know, they're clearly um, original wood, but it's it's uh, been probably recently re-sanded and re re-waxed, et cetera. Um, it's clearly, clearly the interior has recently been redone and it's actually been done rather tastefully um, with a, a mixture of, of decor you wouldn't expect to go together, but it's, it's pretty good. While um, we're in Phil's this- Phil's always had the most amazing eye. Indeed. Yeah. Could I roll for a praise just to kind of have a, a, a just yeah. an opinion about- Yeah, I, I would yeah. love for you to do that. This okay. is our first roll of the game, so I'm terribly <gasps> excited. My goodness. Let's appraise this room. I- I'm gonna. Yeah. And Mimble looks around and what she sees. <sighs> oh, that is a hard success. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. So, um, sure. Yeah. So, you know that this, this building was built in 1765. Mm. Um, there is sort of off to the right, um, a, a, a wing. Um, as you entered, it, it looks like a renovation that was maybe occurred maybe a hundred years later. It's, it was a, a, a rather large addition to the house. The room that you're in, um, it's, it is expensive. Like the work that went into this, not only was it using the best materials, it was also a lengthy, a lengthy sort of, you know, a lot of stuff here, they've got original like plaster work and original columns and things that have been added that um, w were not cheap and were made specifically for this house. Oh my, Keating, what a place to call your place of work. Oh yes, yes, rather, rather. So Keating goes to the left of the stairwell is an entrance to the parlors, kind of a, you know, um, and you can sort of see into the parlor and, and he, he stands and gestures again. <clears throat> I, I go on to the parlor. All right. Lovely. So uh, do uh, Edie and, and Jennifer, do you follow? Yeah. Great. So within the parlor, you see Mrs. McMillan. She's distracted. She's sitting um, sort of near one of the, a bookshelf, a large bookshelf, and she's got pictures of her husband just, um, sitting around her and she's reading uh the herald an article from the herald a uh, newspaper and as she and as you enter oh oh girls oh my goodness ah, i'm so glad you're please please sit your journey must have been how was it how was your your train ride and the the boat ride in the car oh my goodness you did so many to get here i'm so thankful so grateful please please sit 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 I will not sit. If there's like uh, expensive things on the mantel piece, I would like to go look at, at them. Maybe like, you know, any candle holders or decorative items over there. I'm going to have to inspect first. Yeah, sure. The, um, there is a fireplace in the parlor. It is marble. Um, and it has two, the uh, sides are, are sculpted in. Um, and you can tell it's, it's new. So this isn't, this is not an original work. So. Um, yeah, and then on top is uh, just like a gold um, clock, like one of those, um, what are they called? They're German. There's a name for that, yeah. There's a name for that. I'm just going to do this until the everyone gets it. I know, exactly. Clocks. Like the, man they go like this. It's it's, it's a mantle clock. Yeah. Oh, anyway. shame sure. they didn't renovate <clears throat> the original. <laughs> uh, please, please sit. Girls, you must be so so tired um i should say miss mcmillan i mean y'all are obviously know this but um she is a woman in her late 50s she has a uh, silver very coiffed hair she's she's very put together um she's definitely someone that you you know in her younger days was very a very attractive young woman and she's aged gracefully in a you know a dame judy dench sort of way she is not the same she's not the same looker she was before but you know, she's still, she's got good skin, you know, she got some good creams. Um, and however, that being said, she looks noticeably tired. Um, 
It is called a mantle clock. It's uh, our, our, our tech has looked it up. It is just the clock on the mantle is called a mantle clock. But you Perfect. perfectly illustrated its silhouette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mantle clock. Ooh. Edie, right. uh, that's your godmother. Perhaps <clears throat> you should cheer her up. Um, yes. Just then the door opens and Summers enters with a silver tray and tea and scones. It says, Mim, they gave the tea and the scones and I bring it. And he oh. sets it down. Oh, who is, who is this? Who is, who is this, Edie? Oh, Crystal, may I introduce Summers? You know, Winter Retired. Oh, I guess I had Winter Retired. It retired two, two fortnight ago. Was it the fall? Yes, that'd be the fall. Ah, uh, yes, yes. That Winter's was summer. That fall. was summer. Oh, summer. Winter's retired two weeks ago in the summer. And now I have Summers. Isn't he charming? Thank you. And he kind of bows and then like backs up into a bookcase, you know, like, like the staff does, like the help does where he's just like, I'm done talking, but he just waits there. I don't think he'll last till winter. She mutters under her breath. <laughs> uh, Crystal, dear, I, I, I am very concerned. I, are you okay? Have you please I, please have some have some tea and some scones? Grant makes the best scones. She's she's wonderful. Please please, I oh. you're a guest in my home. All all three of you are. I couldn't I, please have a seat. Um, oh, I, but darling, please partake as well. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, you must take care of yourself as well. Yes, I I don't know that I could possibly have any scones right now, but I would definitely yes. We'll sit somewhere. Yes. And she pours herself some tea, and she pours you you all tea, as is proper. Well, I um <laughs> lost my stomach quite a bit on the boat, and then and then the train, and and then the car. But oh, a scone! Mm. I do love a scone. No, but here I have. She'll just like put some on a put some scones over and bring them over to Mimble, so she doesn't have to stop investigating. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard about Arthur. We did. We saw the article this morning. Those police, they're useless. They're useless, they are. They're just quite inappropriate. Quite, un- I'm terribly unsettled. They went, he, he went to work at the golf course and just disappeared. And they have, they have no sense of urgency. They went there, it was as if they were looking for a runaway dog. Just no, didn't care at all, especially- well, what else would you call a husband? He's oh. my husband, Mimble. Oh, a joke in poor taste, Mimble. I'm so sorry. Not the time, not the time. Right, 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 oh. right. Oh, Arthur. And she reaches over and she grabs it like a, a pretty large portrait and is just like holding it. And she's not, you know, particularly hiding it. Edie, are you now back near her? Or are you still over with Mimble? Yeah, she's just kind of over her shoulder, like ready to like, there, there on the shoulder if need be. But- uh could I take this opportunity since she's staring at this portrait to study it a little bit, like to get kind of like the character and gravitas of Arthur? Like maybe this is a recent portrait than what I've seen. For sure. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a, a portrait of, of Arthur. You see um, a gentleman in, in his sort of mid sixties in, and he's in a tweed suit. He's a little rotund and he's standing in front of Crow Hall. Um, and it looks like it was taken in the summertime. Um, can you roll psychology for me? Yeah, and I'm gonna actually go oh, ahead and have good sound effect. <laughs> I'm gonna go actually have Summers roll it as well. Summer, because he's there. Yes. Um, Did you want all of us or just Dee Dee? Well, Edie has specifically asked to study it. Great. Um, and uh, Summers specifically uh, likes to study anything Edie studies. I can't find his thing. I'll do it in a bit. Um, all right. So you failed your. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's a it's just a portrait of of him in front of Crow Hall. You know, he's smiling and he's he looks very uh, put together. Um, I'm gonna be like, uh, is it then she'll like, so yes, yes, of course, dear. And she'll like get a little, like just a little scone and just like kind of start like, um, cutting it in like little tiny pieces and then just like slowly sitting it next to 
crystal and then like kind of offering little bites to and while talking to her and like kind of trying to distract her into eating something while just asking about Arthur Arthur's days leading up to his disappearance. Eating um, her one bite at a time. <laughs> she yeah. she does not eat. She she is a very polite woman though, so she will basically take your bites and just put them on her plate. <laughs> so, but she's uh, actively not um, eating. Um, Fun game. Yes. Bite? No thanks. Okay, question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, are there? He went to the Thistledown Golf Club. He was somewhat agitated that day, but he. He went and, and no one has seen him. No one knows anything. No, no one has is, is been helpful. I... Um... Can... Crystal, my dear. Yes. Uh, well, everyone knows the authorities are numbskulls. They are. Arthur, they really are. He must really. have just wandered off and, well, maybe he's having a drink at a pub or, you know, fell asleep on a train. Anything. Minimal, like really. What? <laughs> Again, you question my husband. My husband would not just wander to a pub for two days. Do you think he was kidnapped? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm I at a loss. I'm at a loss, honestly. My money's on honestly. kidnappers. Perhaps well, a ransom note. What would be agitated note? about? What? What would be agitated about? Oh, the, there had been some delays in the in the um, renovations. I'm not sure, honestly. I We never really spoke about his work. I was very focused on renovating the house here, and, and he was focused on, on the golf course, and he wouldn't tell me about it. You see, I don't know anything about his business there. I haven't even really been to the golf course. Um, it just looks so dreadful from the outside. I don't know why I would go it inside. Really does. Well, Wait. hold on. You did all the renovation here at the hall, and he did all of it at the golf course? Well, this is our home. I am, of course, you know, going to make our, our home uh, livable. You should have seen it before, Memble. It was just so outdated, you know. But uh, yes, and uh, yes, and he's been working on a golf course. Well, Crystal, is... it seems your progress has been considerable, considerable while the golf course remains in tatters. I, I don't know what the inside of the golf course looks like. Honestly, I haven't. I haven't been. But, you know, his foreman, um, um, Nan, I believe, he, you know, uh, there was, I, I'm, I, he might know. Oh, oh, no, oh, you know, the staff. He, the staff, actually, especially his valet, um, Kilburn. Kilburn's been with us for so long, and, and they were so close. He would talk to Kilburn um, quite often, and you know, the rest of the staff might ha have a better idea. He and I just never spoke of, of work. Um, can I have all of you roll either psychology or spot hidden? Whichever one you think is better. Ooh. Definitely spot hidden for me. <laughs> <laughs> Epically failed on Mimble's part. Okay, cool. Hard success. Just a regular success for Jennifer. Just a regular success on spot hidden or spot hidden. Okay. Um, so you notice that uh, her her cheeks look a little flushed, almost like she's em embarrassed. Um. At at the noting. Oh, uh, at this. She just said the valet's name, Kilburn. Uh, sorry, yeah, not not specifically it's saying Kilburn's name, but just in in general when you when you guys are asking her, you know, why he was upset or or trying to, she she just looks a little she looks a little embarrassed. I bet it was something. Hmm. Yeah. And Jennifer uh, noticed. Uh yes, Jennifer noticed. And Jennifer noticed. Of course, my dear. Uh, I'm going to kind of sneak off over to uh summers like oh summers i i can't find can you help me and then she'll bring like the blue bag and be like and just kind of whisper to him off to the side like could you go talk to the staff and see what's what i don't think they'll be as kind to talking to me mm. yeah. yes mm, i don't know if it would be appropriate but so i can can i say mm, that picture of of the uh, Mr. Macmillan. He smiles like a man who fake his smile. 
Oh. Hmm? Oh, thank you, Summers. I just, I just don't know what to do. But thank you. I just, you know what? I'll be brave. I will talk to the staff. I can do you, this. You, you got this. Take this, mother. <laughs> this, your mother's not here, so you got this. I've, I've come to sit down on the sofa, I think next to Jennifer. Jennifer, is that where you're sitting? Yes. And you uh, read her psychology role. <clears throat> yeah? I... She seems perfectly fine to me. And Jennifer will give Mimble a little look, trying not to be too obvious so that Crystal doesn't notice, but uh, just one of these, like... <laughs> Jennifer, what have you noticed? Moment. At meantime, she's just staring at his image, zoning out, giving you a moment to talk. Oh, well, since she's distracted, I might as well. She looks a little embarrassed, don't you think? I have no idea what that look even looks like. Well, she just... I seem mm. like something's up, and she's not very happy. And maybe something... May have happened between them before he left. You don't want to ask her about it? Hmm. Well, I, I suppose that we could. If you need anything at all. You have, you have leave uh, of all of our amenities. Obviously, obviously you're going to stay here. We've got rooms set up for you and, and, um, you know, I'll make sure we've got a room downstairs set up for summers. Obviously, obviously. And you'll need a car. If you want to get around, you, you can, do any of you drive or does summers, I'm sure summers drives. Yes. Summers takes me everywhere. Right. Wonderful. Uh, so you have, I, I will lend you um, our car, the, the Humber 1440. The, the, it's a five seater. So you should be terribly comfortable. And um, I do recommend you speak with the staff. I'm just, I'm just so tired. I, I'm I just, horse, darling. <clears throat> you yeah. should get some rest. I can't I'm so keep sorry. You anymore. Were you having marital marital troubles? Maritime troubles? Mar- what what mm-hmm. is wrong with you today? This is now the third time you have g- g- questioned. So in a, I don't remember you being so inappropriate. I, I no I, one has ever said that to me before. I swear, I thought all of you were 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 truly, you know, tactful girls. It's it's like you you have no uh, proper upbringing at all, Mimble. Really. Really? No, I was raised. I was raised just like these other ladies, and uh, of course, I choose to work. I, um, we met in finishing school, did we not? Yes, Mimble. It's, I think, you know, Mimble was feeling quite sick from the train, so I think maybe her tempers are a bit off. Uh, Why don't we leave you to your Mm, uh, rumination? I'm sure all of us here so suddenly after such a tragic yes. horrors yes. a bit and much she she rings a bell and then um keating will will take care of you and i just i just i need I'm, I'm going to lie down i'm going to have a little i'm so sorry that you've come up in these dreadful circumstances I, uh, and she sort of like gets up and walks out we're here to help Yes, and Crystal, I'm sorry, just one more thing before you go. But the last time I did talk to Arthur, he talked about uh, a library? Yes, what, what, or, you or your a... library, that he said that you were decorating your library. I mean, we do, We yes, we have a library and I've been decorating everything. Is it all right if we spend some time there? To... Oh, it's, wherever you'd like. Spend some time all over the house. I, you know, I don't want to, I don't mean to burden you with my troubles. No, you're no trouble at all. Rest well, dear. Uh, yes, I just, I wish, I just wish there was something, something to be done. I'm, the police have been so dreadfully unhelpful. So, especially Detective Inspector McAndrew, terrible, terrible man, terrible man. She mm. sort of goes off wondering, <clears throat> and then Keating appears. You, uh, ladies? Keating. Mm, yes. Uh, we will see the madam at dinner, I believe. She's yes, dinner is at 7 p.m. p.m. promptly. Um, you must, you must be at dinner, obviously. Obviously, obviously. Obviously. Of course. Obviously. Obviously. But we it is, miss it. at this point, it's about um, noon. So, 
But you all must be very tired. The madam has also said if if you would like to speak with any of the staff, um, you know, to to glean the information, she's you know any any help you can be. Honestly, honestly, I don't know that she would ask for it outright, but but I think I I think honestly, if you could help at all, that would be helpful. Keaton, honestly. it is my deep desire to be of assistance in finding Arthur. Do you have any hunches, let's say, as to where he might have gone? Well, I mean, no, no, it was it was a very odd sort of day that day and an odd sort of day the night before. I don't want to, I, I don't want to say anything disparaging, obviously, but obviously, but, but in the helps of, in the hopes of helping, there was, it's just Mr. Macmillan, um, uh, he just was very, he was very stressed, you see, uh, more so than usual. In fact, he and and Mrs. McMillan had had an argument the evening mm. before. And she's, she was rather, she's been rather distressed about it. Don't ask her about it. She wouldn't tell you. She'd be rather embarrassed about it, I think. But yes, no, definitely. Uh, no one would ever ask. That'd be too Brilliant. Yes, yes, obviously. Obviously, you all are proper ladies of tact, of course. But no, he just... Um, He's been very stressed about the golf course, you see, and he was, you know, um, complaining. And I think she was just trying to help, trying to, you know, calm him down, ask some questions and, you know, to try to, 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 to help with his stress. And he, he said something long, it was awful, it was awful. He said something along the lines of, uh, did, so, he made some remark about her useless flapping about things that she did not understand. And it was, I, uh, I've never, I've never heard them fight. I've never heard him say anything like that. So clearly he was under quite a bit of stress. But at breakfast the next day, which was, it was as though nothing had happened between them. They were fine. He was still rather, rather put out before he left. He when, said his own wife went about uselessly flapping. Yes, yes. Mm. She never struck me as a useless flapper. No, no, no. In our um, dancing days, I heard she was quite a useful. Oh no, flapper. no. I, I don't think he was referring to dancing. I think it was, it was um, um, her speaking, how she spoke. Oh, flapping. you think that she was talking too much? Yes, I, I think the implication was he did not want to speak to her about his work. He, she, you know, they usually uh, keep that very, very private. He's a private man, and he doesn't like to bring his work home. You see, and so I, I think he was just, I think he was just stressed. Stress I turned stuff. to my friends and I whispered just to them, oh, well, if I were Crystal, I would have been the one to do him in useless flapping. Oh, oh, and he suggested she should rather than bothering him about work, she should um, concern herself with a curtain pattern rather oh than... My. Yes, oh, it was, it was awful. awful. Oh, awful. yes, it's very indeed. Awkward. That does seem... I mean, was he... I mean... We weren't, you know, here with them, but was he always that abrupt with her? I just never No, never, know. never. He's never been that. That's what that is why I I remembered it. It was so odd. It was very out of character, you know. And the next day, again, I, at breakfast, they were lovely toward each other, no problems. It was almost like back to normal, but he was still rather stressed. He he mentioned something about he headed he had to thistle down about that morning he, he left and he said something about wanting to um see what the hold up was. I believe he was intending to speak with um his foreman Nan about um you know what, what was a, 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 there were delays apparently. I've never actually been to Thistledown, so I don't oh, know. But it's really so close. Know the name of the foreman. Nan, yes. It's um, um Nan. Nan. Yes. Like uh, a cat. Nan. Uh, no, no, Cameron Nan Nan. Nan. What cat? cat? What cats do you know named Nan? When I was a child, I once encountered a Nan cat. Never mind. Probably not the same Nan. Nan is there's an R in it, quite pronounced R. Nan. Nan. Mm. It's Cameron all obviously Nan. pronounced fairy. Keen. Mm. Any? Well, is Kilburn around? We would love to speak with him as well. Oh, the valet, of course, of course, yes, yeah. yes. Mm, mm. Maybe he'll drive us down to Thistledown. Oh, no, he's not a valet, he's a valet. Oh. 
course. And the difference being... Oh, it, it's um, the personal valet is is a gentleman's gentleman. He helps uh, um, the the sir get dressed, lays out his like clothes, Thomas. helps him with grooming. Yes. Um, yes. Ah, oh, Summers. Yes. Oh, well, we should find him too. Um, oh, important question, Keating. Very important question. Mm. What is for dinner? Oh, yes, I believe tonight is roast duck, but I can check with Grant if, if you'd like more specifics. I believe my appetite will return for roast duck. Oh, uh, hopefully, yes. I mean, you've got quite some hours between now and then, so hopefully. Mm, obviously. Well, uh... Yes, so shall I escort you somewhere, or would you like to stay in the parlour and I can uh, call um, Mr. Kilburn here, or... I would like to see more of the home. Jennifer, wouldn't you? I was going to suggest um, maybe we could see our rooms and um, before we go to the library, maybe fresh up before dinner at some point. Yes, of course, of course. Yes. yes, if it's seven hours till dinner, I will need at least three and a half to dress. Whatever you need, Mum. Excellent. Um, yes. Edie, did you want to go to the library first? I, I would love to. Right. Yes. So, Miss Edie, you will be going to the library, and the, the uh, both of you will be going to your rooms. Is that? Ooh. Well, I, I will attend the library first, and then then I will get dressed for dinner. I love to see just the decor. Each and every item is so indelibly picked. Yes, yes. The mum spent quite a bit of time. <clears throat> decorating and choosing and all all that. So, yes. Um, so, Ms. Buckworth, you shall be joining the other ladies in the library or... The library indeed. I don't yes, read the books, but I do note their value. And, um, Mr. Summers, I, I can show you to your um, room, of course, if it, or to whatever you... I don't do you need my help? Summers, I trust whatever you do when you're not around me. I appreciate this. So, um, yeah, so Summers exits and, and uh, uh, yes, just, um, you know, grab one of the, uh, someone will show you to your room. Yes, um, I will take it to the library. Um, yes, yes, please. So uh, the mansion is three stories. And he takes you sort of up the grand staircase to the second story. Um, and, uh, you know, down some hallways. And each, each hallway is kind of lovely, like more lovely than the last almost. And then you enter kind of a grand library and, and he just sort of goes through there. And then sort of briskly walks away. This is always my favorite part of Crystal's Homes. Yeah, so um, it's a lovely large library, sort of, you know, the one that every home has. It's not quite uh, a Beauty and the Beast library, but it's it's definitely, it's got, you know, shelves with floor to ceiling, books, and a, a ladder that goes round. And it is decidedly um, less modern than the rest of the house, but still, um, it's more, this is the more restored room, Bimble. Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm, interesting wood inlays in the bookshelves. Yes, I've seen this before. Mm. Lovely design. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Edie will just kind of like glance around and look for anything like new or interesting, having been um, her time with Crystal, like always sending her books and seeing like if she's read the books that Chris, she sent, if Crystal's read the books that. Edie has sent her if they're on the shelf or if they're dog-eared or well-loved and then just anything else that may catch her attention. Okay, so you're looking for the books that you've you've given to Edie? Yeah. To see okay, or sorry, given to Crystal? Yeah, yeah um, I, go ahead and roll a spot hidden for me. Oh, all right. Woo. So, yeah, there is there is a shelf um, towards the back that is, is all of the books you've sent her in a line. Um, and they are the, the bindings are like, they're very, they're very clean and immaculate. And if you, if you pull one out, um, 
it is, and you open it, it doesn't make that, do you know the first time you open a book and it makes that cracking noise? Um, so the first couple don't make that noise. They've clearly been read. Um, but there are some towards the left that are a little less loved, maybe, maybe not quite gotten into yet, but it looks like at least an effort has been made to, to try to read these books. Yeah. So, uh, um, so is it like the newer ones that I sent her? Is it just like kind of random the leftmost? Does it go like in chronological? Like, yeah, it's it's in chronological order, right to left, and she's you know, it's um, you know, it's it's possible, uh, yeah, she's she just hasn't gotten to them or yeah. Are these the books you wrote or just ones you sent? A bit of both, and what I'm looking for is to see like if things have been unwell since they moved here, like trying to calculate oh I sent her that book around the time that they moved here and then like when did she start slowing down her reading yeah so the books um around the time so they moved here in May and the books that you started sending her after May have not really been cracked but you also know she's been renovating so yeah it, it could just be um business does yeah. it seem like this room Aside from renovation, is one that Arthur would use often. Are there any remnants of him hanging about? Everything is very artfully done, but it's not well worn yet. Um, it's not quite a a lived in. It's a very livable home, but it's not quite a lived in home. Not yet. Um, and we're left alone in the room right now. You are until two <laughs> young ladies enter. <gasps> so. Two young maids enter and they are, they're young. They're like 16 and 17. Um, and they're both, uh, they're youthful, obviously, because they're teenagers. They're willowy. They're quite attractive. One has uh, dark hair and brown eyes and the other has auburn hair and green eyes. And they're just sort of um, giggling and coming in and um, they don't notice you when they enter and they just go right in. And she goes, right there, that's right, sorry, sorry, right there, I did. Oh, no, you didn't, Teresa. You didn't see anything. I did, Katie, I did. It was a ghost, it was. I saw right there. And then I ran away, and I was told I couldn't tell the McMillans, and I didn't know why, but I saw right there. Ah, oh, Teresa, you're just making it up like you always are. And then they notice you. They go, oh, 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 so sorry. Sorry. Well, um, I'm Katie, and I'm Teresa, and you must be the guest. Oh, yes, I bet they're the guest. Obviously, they're the guest. They're the, what, who else could they be, Katie? Shut up, Teresa. Hello, welcome, welcome to the, um, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, I didn't know, didn't know you were here, um, we're the maids, <laughs> and we lo we do love working here, and it's been lovely, and we get exactly the right amount of money for exactly the right amount of work, and, um, you're talking too much, Katie, shut up, Teresa, can we get you anything? Uh, did you, did you understand out? anything they said? <laughs> I, uh, yes. I heard right. ghosts. Did yeah, you hear ghosts? I was ghost about to ask. Hmm? I was about to ask the same thing. You said something about a ghost. Oh no! Don't listen to her. There's no ghost. Shut up, Katie. There is ghost. There are ghosts. I saw a ghost in this very room. I did. I did. You did not. I did. And as soon as I saw it, I ran away. It gave me such a fright. I ran away. And I went to the kitchen where I saw Miss Miss Grant, and she told me I couldn't tell uh, the McMillans. I do know why. I know why. No, you don't, Katie. I do know why. You don't know why. Shut up, Katie. Anyway, but it gave me such a fright. Do you believe in ghosts? Have you seen ghosts? I'm I ready to believe. Absolutely do. I understood Katie. <laughs> and uh ghost. <laughs> I there was a ghost, it was. Um, uh, my name is Jennifer Smallwood. Uh, this is my dear friend Edie and my dear friend Mimble. Oh, you're such lovely ladies. You're so proper. Proper ladies they are. It's true. It's true. Pa proper ladies. Uh, Mimble does like a really little curtsy where she puts one foot behind her other foot and does it to each of them in the opposite direction. They they both curtsy and they both like, they're like, as soon as you do that, they're like, you know, you can tell they think that's what proper ladies do and they should have done it to begin with. And they both do a little curtsy. I'm like, oh, huh? hi. It's lovely to meet y'all. It's so it's so upsetting that you had to come at the time you did, though. If you had just come maybe a week before or something, you know, it wouldn't have been quite so upsetting. That's insensitive, Teresa. Uh, how 
are you did you grow up around here Oh, I, oh, I, yes, we're, we're from, I'm just, I'm from just north of here, and I'm from just south of here, but we're both, you know, very nearby. Uh, did any local legends, you said there was a ghost, so. <gasps> oh, there is, it's more than a ghost. Oh, Teresa, no. Yes, yes, yes. So, there is, and these parts. There is a hellhound, a big black dog, and he roams around. And I've seen him. I have. No, you haven't. I have. I have. And he roams around the edges of Crow Wood. The the woods just outside the hole, the Crow Wood. The big black hellhound. He 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 roams. Teresa, stop it! Stop your gum shit, you now. Katie, there's a dog, and it's scary, and he's a hellhound, and he'll eat you if you go too close. And I have seen him. And you in the library. Mm. No, 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 not in, no. I saw ghosts in the library. I saw the hellhound uh, in Crowwood outside. He didn't come into the buildings. No one would let him in. I'm sure Keating would not and I let a hellhound into the house. He tracked mud and blood everywhere. But again, uh, I was told I couldn't talk about it with the Macmillan, so it's so nice to talk to somebody about it. Somebody who has interest. I don't know why I can't talk to Macmillans. I know why. No, you don't, Katie. I do. It's because of all of the suspicion the, at, at, the, at the golf course. You didn't know what you're talking about, Katie. I do. I saw it. I saw in papers. <gasps> Katie. You I'd saw love papers. to hear about it. I would love to hear about what you saw in the papers. Well, I was cleaning the study, Mr. McMillan's study, and he had some crumpled papers. Katie, you didn't read his trash. I did. I was trying to throw it away, and I just happened to... Uncrample it and read it. I did. I did. I read his trash. I did. But it gets so boring here. Katie, shut up, Teresa. Go on about your dogs. Anyway, so it was two papers he had crumpled up. He never uses the study here, so it's quite odd, you see. He does all his work at, at the golf course, and the study he just kind of sometimes sits in, but not really. Anyway, so it was two papers, and one of them, some kind of like a ledger or something i don't know i had numbers i didn't really understand it but the other one was a letter from cameron nairn the foreman and he was saying um uh he was talking about how the men he was, had had trouble finding workers because they were getting sick they were mm-hmm. they were getting mm-hmm. sick working at the golf course I, I, they got, they were falling ill from ro- working at the golf course and they, no one wanted work there anymore because they were all getting sick and they were seeing things. And like what? Like I don't, I don't, I can honestly. Uh, no, there's no such thing as dogs in the woods. There are dogs. I mean, there's dogs. You can't see there's no dogs. No, you know what I mean. There's no hellhounds. Anyway, I don't know. I, I, I didn't know exactly what he was talking about, but just that he sounded really defensive. And Cameron Nairn, he's the one who wrote the letter. He's the foreman. He was saying, um, you know, that that they're not crazy and they're not lazy. They're they're seeing things and it's real. And I didn't know what the things were. But I bet that's why Grant didn't want you to talk to the McMillans about your crazy superstitions because the workers have crazy superstitions and he's got enough to deal with. That does sound like a lot on his plate. Aye? I didn't ken most of what you're saying, but this sounds very interesting. He never uses the study. Would you show us to the study? Hey, but you can't tell, can't tell anyone I brought you there. Oh no, obviously Katie. you know you can trust us, even though you just met us and you told us so many things that could definitely get you fired. But we wouldn't. We won't. Tell anyone wouldn't. that you told no. us this. You can't. You can't. This. We wouldn't. It's really important to us. We can't. We can't get fired. It's important to us. Please, please don't, don't tell anyone. No, no. no. Summers, he can keep an eye out. Who is Summers? Um, big, tall, Russian. Then on the inside. He's with me. Oh, I, I, mm. all right, all right. We'll show you, but. And then Miss Grant enters and yells at them. Uh, no, 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 no. Actually, we've asked, um, we've asked Katie and Teresa to be our personal guides through the house. Um, so, uh, Miss Grant, who is, let me find who she is. I mean, what she looks like. She's I want to read you. She is the cook and housekeeper. Yes, um, she is in her late forties. 
Uh, she's a thin, upright woman with sparkling blue eyes, um, which you, of course, can write about in your book, Edie, um, and a very rosy complexion. She has a kind, caring face, and she enters and says, Girls, girls, what are you doing here? You should be working. Honestly, honestly, girls, honestly, get to work, get to work. And then they just both scuffle off. I'm so sorry about that. But if oh, uh, no. were, were you enjoying the library? I'm sorry if they were disturbing you. Useless little no. things. Honestly. They should oh, have no, been we quite enjoyed them. Oh, I have pages that's for good. my story from them. Can we get them back? Well, I'm I didn't glad understand they were... most of what they said, but every fifth word, they said something fascinating. Well, then well, yeah. I can fill you in. I can fill you in. Yes, I, you know, that's good that they were good for something for you. That's good. That, I just, that research has no propriety and Katie's a little better, but uh, useless girls. I really don't think they should have been hired, but I'm so sorry that you, not a bother for you, not a bother for you. Um, Can I help you ladies with anything? Um, I've we... been told by Mrs. McMillan that you've got the run of the house. So, so I'm here to help. Would you like more yes. scones? A roast duck. I I like it extra roasty. Oh, right. I'll write that down for tonight then. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Grant, are you vocal here? Um, to Crow Hall, you mean? Or I'm actually I'm actually originally from Northern England, but I've I've made Crow Hall my home recently, and I do hope to retire here. Honestly. I do hope that Arthur is found so that I may retire here. I love this hole um, and I rather do like the Macmillans. They're a lovely couple. Well, if he's not found, would you not be able to retire here? Well, well no, if the owner of the manse leaves, I don't, I don't know if I could stay. I see. So you have a personal vested interest in, in finding him. I would love for him to be found, of course. It's terrible. It's a tragedy, really. Well, uh, my friends and I, uh, um, pardon me, Mimble, Mimble Buckworth, mm, gymologist. Ooh, Ooh, lovely to meet you, Miss Buckworth. As, as friends and family friends of, of uh, Arthur, we mm. very much would be willing to take it upon ourselves to rediscover him. Is, is that not right, girls? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh that would be lovely, that would. It would be so lovely to have him back. That's, of course, and anything we can do to help, of course, if you have any, I don't know, any questions or if you need um, if information about the town. I, I don't know how I can help, but I'll try. Miss Grant, are you a superstitious woman? No, no, I'm a religious woman. I'm a, I'm a proper Presbyterian, I am. But no, I don't, superstitions like the girls, I, hmm. Mm, no. Understandable. Understandable. Well, uh, so you know nothing of the lore of the region in that case? Oh, I know the lore. I just don't take, I don't put much salt in it. You know, um, you know, I've heard of the dogs the girls talk of and the, all of the things that Nairn says the, the workers talk of. I don't know if I take that very seriously. I, can I have y'all roll a charm charm roll for me? Charm or persuade, whichever one y'all uh, have the best stuff. Nailed it. <laughs> I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. No, no, <laughs> you, you were being sarcastic. Everybody, everybody oh, oh, I would like to spend seven luck to make that a success. All right, there you are. Okay, uh, mark that on your sheet for me. Can do. You can also at any point. I should uh, let um, uh, Monica and remind Erica. You can push your rolls if you want. Um, if you push your roll, basically you get to roll again. But if you fail the second time, um, something bad happens. So you at any point, if you want to re-roll, you can push your roll. Um, there are some situations where I, as a keeper, may say, "No, you can't. You can't push that one." But for the most part, if you want to push your roll to try to roll it again, you can. But a failure on a push roll is um, very bad. 
<laughs> weary, weary. Weary, baby. Weary, weary. 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 Okay. Also, the thing I just did is spend my luck, which might be a roll mm -hmm. or might be a thing you spend one for one to make a success happen. Yeah, for instance, um, Edie uh, could have spent three luck to make it a success. Okay, I'll try that and see what else I could find out. <clears throat> I'll okay, let so you do it. I'll unspend yeah, three, my seven. Three. Yeah, because I was supposed to say like, than... I was like, wait, what's this luck thing? <laughs> I was like, spending. I could spend three. All right. Yeah. Uh, spend three luck, and then you. Okay. Um. All right. So all right. What, what was I? I just, she was mid sentence. Um. Okay. You just, want to tell us things about <laughs> the well, lore? Well, it's so near. He. Let's just say he likes his drink. And let's also say that he spends most of the day and most of his money at the Queen's Arms. At the pub down the way. He's we a, saw it. He's always deep in his cups. So I don't believe most of what he says about what the workers saw, honestly. Um, and, you know, he was a lovely man. He was, but his wife left him last December. And ever since then, he's been quite a drinker. He was a bit of a drinker before, but now he's just gotten really bad and he makes a lot of rash choices. And so I don't know that I trust most of what he says, you know, when he says the workers are seeing things. That just sounds like an excuse, that does. And I tell you, I understand being left by a lover. I, I had a lover once. Billings. Out of wedlock, you did? Well... Well, of course, it, I, I, I mean... It was well, a lover of the heart, a lover of the heart. She's well, very poetic. Courting, of course. Oh, of course, but that's all that. I'm so sorry, dear. And what word would you use? Yes, um, I found the, the knickers of another woman. <gasps> On the same day, he was hit by a motorist. Oh, anyway, that's, that's quite a story there, love. My um, feelings are very conflicted about it. I visit his grave once a month, but uh, I bring flowers and spit on it. <clears throat> oh, yes, that's that's very that sounds tragic. really I'm, healthy. Yes, we we try not to talk about marriage and values around Mimble. It's a very close, mm -hmm. heartbreaking thing. But anyway, yes, I he knows. Uh, perhaps Nan is not completely off his rocker if he would choose to make a oh. drastic decision after being left alone. Oh, um, so many ways. Yes. Right. So, um, can I get you any scones? I think I'm I good. need a scone now. Yes, I need a scone. I'm back. Jennifer? Take some. Why not? Right. All right. So, I'll leave you here. Um, and I'll just go get some scones. And maybe a bit of wine for Mimble after her little. Oh, I'll get, I'll get you a glass of sherry. Thank you. A wee glass of sherry. Uh, or a, a wee larger. A large. A large. Wee. A, wee, a wee one. Right. And she leaves. And leaves you alone in the library. Uh, the biblioteca. <laughs> I thought I, she'd never leave, and now I want to go down to that pub. Yes. Yes, that sounds fine. It's just, whenever I, whenever I talk about Billings, I get so emotional. <laughs> and understandably, darling, and I think your flowers and spitting is a very good ritual. I think he I deserves agree. both of those things. Both of these? You didn't deserve to be hit by the motorist, but... No, you you know, you're, you're dealing it with, uh, with, with a bit of empathy with the flowers, and then um, you get your revenge with the, the spitting, and I, and I understand that. Felix. Yes. <clears throat> it, it, maybe uh, don't spit in the library, though. Oh, right. And she scuffs it with her foot. Anyway, anything else you wanted to see in the library, Edie? Didn't you spit on the floor? Like, actually? <laughs> yeah. All right. That's, that's a thing. Okay. You know what? Katie and Teresa can find it later. <laughs> oh, I think two. a ghost did it. <laughs> okay, so it's we evidence. Have... It's ectoplasm. Jennifer, what do you think of the ghost story? Oh, I think it's a bit of fun, but I mean, I, I wouldn't want to discount it at this point. I have um, seen some things. That's right, your trip to Peru. Yes. You keep being so mysterious about it. Won't you tell us more? 
Um, maybe when um, Mrs. Grant brings us the sherry, I will, I will maybe talk about it more then. I don't know if we'll be here. We've got to find our way to this Queen's Head pub. I agree. Do you think... Do you think we could leave before she gets here? She gives me feelings like my mother, and I don't... I don't like it. <laughs> That's fair. She well, is I, reminiscent of your mother. The pub does have alcohol. And do you like Sherry? Mm-hmm. On occasion. Who doesn't like Sherry? It's Sherry! Yeah. Do you remember Sherry Bell from school? Mm. Yes. She used to eat paper. Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh, they cracked her of that <clears throat> habit right away. Yeah. That was lovely. I did try to blame her for my homework once. Oh, that's fair. She wasn't always picky about what paper she was eating. Yes, yes, Sherry ate my homework was a common excuse for anyone who chose not to turn it in. And everyone always believed them. (laughs) What a shame. She only really did that for the first, like, month of school or so. Yes, but uh, rumors, they spread far and deep, don't they? Mm, Just like this mm, Cameron Nairn and his cups. So at this point, you've definitely been in the library for a bet. Um... (laughs) And but you do not see Grant come in back coming back. Instead, you see sort of a, a a tall, thin gentleman with angular features. He's got uh, dusty blue eyes and kind of um, brownish hair. And he he saunters in. If any of you um, you if you're familiar with the family, you would recognize this is Kilborn Kilburn, um, Arthur's valet. Um, he looks exactly like Billings. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, and he's he's been with the family, you know, since they were in America. Oh, um, well, <clears throat> an older one. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's about mid-40s. Yeah. Um, so he enters and, uh, uh, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. And he's got a tray with scones and uh, three empty small glasses and then a little, like, a port bottle. Uh, um, Aye, those eyes! I heard you ladies uh, were needing some, um, you know, well, there you go. Also, Keaton said you uh, wanted to speak with me? Um... We wanted to ask you some questions about, um, Arthur. Oh, yeah. Tragic, tragic situation. Very, very heartbreaking. Um, do you have a cousin perhaps in New York? And I will say, uh, Edie, you notice, uh, uh, Summers enters the library as well, but then just stands against a shelf in the back. He's always doing that. Yeah. Isn't he charming? Um, you know, ma'am, honestly, I, I have cousins, all more cousins than I, I know. Uh, so more than likely, I have a cousin in New York. Um, mm. Interesting. Mm. Kilburn, do you mm. like Sherry? It, it's not particularly my, my drink, ma'am. I'm uh, more of a, a whiskey sort. And where would one find a good scotch in this town? Well, um, I mean, th- there was some at, at the, the golf course, of course, but that's closed now. And, uh, I mean, the pub is really the only thing. It's the only place to get uh, scotch in this town. It's just the one pub. Yeah. Is that is that what you wanted to speak with me about? Was the where to get? Not at all, Kilburn. <clears throat> uh, May just... I? Uh, I'll take a sip of the sherry. Kilburn, mm. what do you know of? The argument. Uh, which argument? I think you know. I don't want to say too much, but between Crystal and Arthur. Oh. Oh, I, honestly, I don't. I, they never argue. I, I don't. Never. I thought. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about between um, uh, Mr. Mc McMillan and uh, and Nairn. I mean, oh, so there were multiple arguments. 
Well, I mean, there was a, a kind of a kind of a tension between them. Um, you know, I so Arthur had had confided in me. Don't I, I request you don't repeat this to Mrs. McMillan. She's delicate at the time, but um, so the evening before he went to thistle down the evening before he went missing he uh he was he was angry he was right angry at uh at nairn and and um he he said something about i mean i i hate to speak ill of, of blue collar men i know they're just trying to do their jobs but he uh he said that uh nairn had hired um uh lazy bastards i think was the language he used and uh they were getting caught up in in a superstitious nonsense. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, he just, he felt the stuff was falling behind and Naren was just making excuses. And uh, yeah, so that morning he was, he was gonna set things straight. That was his, his plan. And, you know, Mr. McMillan, when he puts his mind to something, y'all know, y'all know, he, he hmm. gets it, he gets it done. Yeah. I just never known him to argue with workers is all. Well, I mean, with the foreman, not with the... Right. Lazy bastards, he called them. Oh, yes. Bastards. Yeah, the, the workers, he called them lazy Pardon bastards. me, I didn't... Whew. Can you all roll a psychology roll for me? Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> no. Well, no. Right. No, absolutely not for Jennifer. <laughs> cool. Uh, just... Um, Edie will just kind of like and just kind of like start just taking notes like what things that he's saying and like wander over to Summers okay um, yeah so Summers is going to lean over to Edie and say he looks nervous he fidgets a lot very fidgety I do not like this fidget hmm and then he leans back into the shell. <clears throat> She'll like kind of wander over, pour herself a sherry, sip at it, like, oh, I don't, I don't care for sherry at all. Mm -hmm. Do you, will you, could you perhaps, Mr. Kilburn? Could I, like, could offers I, her sherry. Could I, could I what? Help, she offers her sherry to Kilburn. Oh, you won't, um, I, I'm not gonna be rude, ma'am, so of course, and he, drinks your yeah. sherry he like shoots it and then like puts it down like a like a man um but yeah it's just... <clears throat> um i i do you kilburn you've traveled you're a very observant fellow but mm. you, you've known you've known dear arthur for so <clears throat> long and he seemed everyone says he seemed a little on edge before he left and i just yeah. get the feeling that this was this golf course doomed? Doomed, ma'am? Doomed. Uh, like it, like the workers falling behind, the arguing with the foreman, and the other arguments that have been rumored to happen. We're not saying that they actually did happen, mind you, but just the tensions are so tight around um, here. Can you roll either charm or persuade for me? Do I have charm? I do have. Oh, I'm very I feel like you know oh, with all that sherry. That's a hard that's... success. All right, you have, you have charmed him with your sherry. Good job. <laughs> um, <it> was... <clears throat> that was my real question about the scotch. I was like, all right, let me find a scotch and woo him with that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a superstitious man, ma'am. Um, but <sighs> there's there's something weird about this whole situation. I um. I've, this is this is gonna sound embarrassing. I, I I've been having nightmares ever since Arthur disappeared, and I remember all my dreams. You see, I I remember all of them vividly, and so I'm not the type of person that just wakes up eight hours later and didn't know what happened. I remember my dreams, and these dreams. It's like I'm in a um, I'm in a dark place a dark terrible terrible place and it, it it almost feels like a like a void and and arthur's there but he's um 
kind of not see through, but you know, like uh, like you were a ghost or something. And he's oh. just asking me for help, and I can't do anything, and I can't move, and uh, it's. Do you feel like your body's paralyzed? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit like that. Yeah, and I, I would I would write it off, you know, but it just I I can't I can't figure out half these dreams it is and they're so vivid and the weird the weird thing about it is i know i'm not the only one who's been having nightmares i won't say who but i did hear from one of the staff that miss mcmillan has been having nightmares since arthur disappeared as well i haven't of course i haven't asked her about it i i do not want to pry but i do wonder if maybe She's been having the same ones, and that'd be weird, wouldn't it? So I don't know about doomed, ma'am, but I there is there is something. You say it's only on. since he's gone missing that you've started having these strange nightly apparitions? Yes, ma'am. It was in fact my first one was that afternoon. I, I took I took an afternoon nap. Uh and I it was I, I wasn't asleep, you know two minutes before I it just slipped into nothingness. I thought it was at first, I thought it was of course, you know, a, a guilt for taking a nap on the job, but I didn't have anything to do at the time. So, but no, then it happened again that night. I can't, I can't figure, can't figure it. Does so, Mrs. McMillan have an attendant? Um, someone whom she trusts very closely, perhaps? Um, I mean, I think she, mm, With personal stuff, I don't know. She's been very professional with us. Majority of her her personal conver- conversing was with was with Mister McMillan. Um, mm-hmm. I think she she trusts y'all. I mean, you are her good friends. Quite. Yeah. Maybe Thank she'll open for- up to you. Thank you, Kilburn, for what you shared. Kilburn, something about you makes me want to trust you so much, but then, but then I don't trust you. I can't. Something holds me back. She falls into his arms. <clears throat> oh, oh, uh, well, well. <laughs> oh, ma'am, pardon um, me, I've fallen. Um, all right. He he writes you, and he's like, <laughs> she does not make any effort to help. <laughs> <laughs> he awkwardly tries to stay. Uh, all right, man. Um, I was I was gonna leave. The, the room, ma'am, uh, so I'm going to need you to stand, or I could put you on a chaise, chaise oh, long. Lay me on a chaise, if you So will. he, like, lifts you up, like, very easily. He's got, you know, oh. um, and then he just, like, lays you down on, on a chaise long, says, and then he walks over to you, too, and, and he says, she, she okay? So, oh, she's fine. How much sherry has she had? Uh, Edie That's is just writing furiously. The one glass went straight to my head. Um, I wish I, I could get help. Jennifer. I wish I could help y'all more. Honestly, I do. Um, I, I, I didn't really get into much of the specifics of of Mister McMillan's business affairs. I just, you know, was there uh, as a, as an ear when he needed to vent. Killed one. One more question. Hmm. This. Seems if it's somehow some sort of curse or something. Do you think there's anything upsetting to the local world having all this disruption of renovation? Oh, um, so you're uh, you're implying that the the renovations are what's causing the huh? I'm a very yeah, superstitious I, I don't, I don't, woman. I don't know if you could see that about me. She lies back on the <laughs> chaise. <laughs> um, well, ma'am, uh, I suppose that is a possibility. I, I, I would not presume to be uh, a, a expert in that field, but um, as far as I can figure, all the problems were at the golf course until Arthur disappeared then weird stuff started happening elsewhere. But I think, you know, Nairn might know best. Um, Children? Hmm? 
do you think you could escort us to the golf course? I mean, it's it's closed. I could escort you to the outside of it. It's it's locked up now. They oh, the Queen's Head is where we'll find this nairn, is it not? Oh, I mean, probably. I mean, everyone knows he likes his <laughs> likes his beverage, likes his drink. Yeah, I would I would I would guess he'd be at the Queen's Head, and he's you know he's got keys. I mean, Arthur had keys to everything, but Arthur's you know we don't know where Arthur is, but uh, nairn he's got he's got keys. Perfect. Oh, Perfect. So- Kilburn, would you be able to, at some point, uh, I don't know if we have time before dinner, but uh, maybe take us all to the pub at some point? Oh, I mean... uh, Or or uh, arrange travel for us to... Oh, of course. I know that, um, yeah, you know, you have have use of of the vehicle, I've been told. Um, So, yeah, make sure... To drive it ourselves? Oh, how quaint! You, you don't have to. Um, I'm sure we could, arrange, we could arrange a driver if, if um, I just, you know, I assumed being American, y'all were modern ladies, um, maybe knew something about, about driving, but we could we can arrange a ride for you, of course. Oh, Edith Ann, you can do it. You can do it. I would love to see you drive with the gloves and the goggles. I mean, ma'am, if, so. you've, if you've never driven before, I would suggest having a driver. I do. I have every faith in you, Edith Ann, that you can learn how to drive. But maybe, maybe for your first time, you, you um. Oh, I know it's horrible circumstances, but we're on vacation. Edie, you should drive. You've read a book, you said. I did, and I've watched Summers plenty of times, right, Summers? Yes, she watches. Isn't it a place with the wide open landscapes all around? And then maybe Summers could coach you on <clears throat> And Edie, you also know that Summers does drive. Yes. Summers yeah. absolutely drives, but I do like the idea of trying my hand. How about, um, Summers, you give me an education on the way there, and then you could drive us on the way back. Of course, ma'am. Whatever Hilburn the man give needs. Me an education. <clears throat> but there's um, books right there, dear. Mendel. She says it under her breath. Oh, uh, well, what? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, I think I'm feeling better now. And she stands up. Lovely. Thank you, Kilburn. Of course. All right. So he he exits, leaving behind the scones and the um, now empty glasses, but there's still more sherry in the bottle. Um, One for the what, road. I'm pouring more in like, glasses. What would, you, what would you like to do? Jennifer? Uh. Do we? Well, I was going to say that Mimble is incorrigible. That girl. <laughs> incorrigible? We're on vacation. I took a steamship to get here. And just because one man goes missing, and we'll find him, yes, we will, doesn't mean I shouldn't have a little sherry and a little fun. Then the pub is the perfect place. At what time is it? Um, at this point, it is about 1.30, Oh, I meant 12.30, 12.40, sorry. You've, you've been wandering around about 45 minutes. You've been at the house. Well, um, should we go to the pub then? The pub. All right. So you all decide to go to the pub, and this is a great place for us to take a little break. Ooh. And when we return we can explore the pub. So we're going to have a 10 minute break. It's uh, 6.30 right now, Pacific. We'll be back in 10 minutes at 6.40 Pacific. Um, Yeah. Thank you all. And we'll see you in 10 minutes. Yay!
Hello, my friends. You are watching the Calyx, our Call of Cthulhu horror RPG anthology series. And this weekend next, we have the incredible guest keeper, Ash Minnick. But I am here, back from this break, to tell you, you can support the Calyx by using our discount promo code at chaosium.com, Calyx2021. That's the name of the show and the current year that we are living in, in case you forgot. We all do, you know. Um, anyway, uh, Chaosium is amazing for sponsoring this show. They publish Call of Cthulhu, which we're all, you know, deeply, darkly in love with. And uh, if you're going to buy their products anyway, we'd love for you to use our code. There you go. That's it. Public service announcement done. And now on with the show. Yay. Amazing, Becca. Was it spooky? Did I spook yeah, you? I, I'm scared. Good. I'm so happy. That's my goal. <laughs> please, please read to me. Please just read to me. <laughs> and then the bunny rabbits. No, <clears throat> another time. <laughs> um, and so where where we last left our investigators, um, our our uh, Edie, Mimble, and Jennifer have, for those of you just joining us, have come to Scotland to visit their very good friend, Mrs. McMillan. Um, however her husband has gone missing right before their arrival. And after speaking with her and with the staff, they have decided they should take it upon themselves to find her husband because the police have been useless. So we found our investigators heading to uh, the Queen's, I said it wrong before. And so I said the Queen's arms and that was wrong. It's her head, so but it's close. It's, it's her head, it's the Queen's head, yes. So they're headed to the Queen's head. Um, Queen's arms is... I mean, arguably, a better it sounds name like for a, a very farm. like loving, comforting place. I'm sure. Well, yeah. the King's Arms is a real pub that I used to go to, um, but it, it's, but it's a different it's a different thing. So now we're at Queen's Head. Anyway, uh, so they're headed to the pub uh, just down the street from Crow Hall, um, and is Edie trying to drive with uh, her butler Summers teaching her, or where did? Um. Yes, Edie, do it. Sure, don't be afraid. Says the devil on the show. Says moaning Myrtle. <laughs> she, she is not driving. <laughs> well, well, um, well, hold, hold on. Uh, you have Sorry. to decide if you're going to drive before you roll to drive. Uh oh. Uh oh. I was Did rolling roll for the decision. <laughs> uh oh. I couldn't flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how do you flip a coin? I can't flip a coin, or I could roll to have an argument about like Summers about who gets control over the car. <laughs> I just didn't oh know. well, no, I mean at this point it's just, uh, do you want to try to drive the car, or do you, or do you pass it off to Summers? Um, I will let it's Summers fine, drive, and then she okay. can she can follow her riding bug, and then they uh, the three of them can focus more on like what do we think is going on because a okay. lot of weird I... stuff has been told to us. It's a very it's a very simple drive. I wouldn't normally roll for it. However, I'm going to roll for drive with Summers, not to see how well he drives literally down the street, um, but just to see how well he teaches Edie on the way. So, wow, no. <laughs> um, you know less about driving than you did before. Wow, that was a critical, like that's- uh, It's really wow. good that you had the caveat, <laughs> this role doesn't matter before that happened. Uh. Well, it, it does matter in that this, um, so yeah, Edie, what is your drive skill right now? Oh no, <laughs> my drive is uh, 20. It's, uh, let's take that down to 18. Oh my! Oh. <laughs> oh, that's not easy to read. Sorry. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. So he does so badly <clears throat> with his metaphors. Evie is convinced that there are literal gerbils, and she now has to find a book about why there are literal gerbils inside the engine. Sure. Yeah. Also, you know, it's you know, you must put in park to drive. That you know, I don't know. It's just <laughs> terrible farmer, things. Likely. <laughs> and you, you finally, you know, you get to the queen's head, no problem, but um, you are definitely less informed <laughs> upon <laughs> arrival. All right. So, so we're at the queen's head. Yay. So Yay. the queen's head is a two story wood and stone country pub. This is the pub that y'all drove by on your way in and it looks the same now. Um, it, you know, is, is an older building at this point. It's about, you know, 60 years old or so. It's not, it's not like, you know, 
thousand year old Scottish, whatever it's, but it, it's older. It's a 60 year old pub. Um, it's situated at crossroads and it's not far from the, the closest access point to uh, Dundee. So it's definitely like the main thoroughfare, you know, as much as one can be in uh, uh, Cooper Angus, which is the nearest small town. But this is this is the place for the locals, for the farmers, for the townsfolk, for the workers. And um, y'all are arriving at this point. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. Sorry, I keep jumping ahead. Um, it's about, I'll say 1.15 in the afternoon. So it's lunchtime. And even at lunchtime, it is teeming. Like there are, are workers. Um, I'm assuming you guys go straight in. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take away your agency, but do you go straight into the pub? After a quick appraisal of the outside visually, of course. Yes, of course. Um, so yeah, it's it's a two-story building. Um, there's, you know, maybe a couple folks coming in and out, but it seems very bustly on the inside. That's where a majority of the things are happening. Ginny, Edie, uh, are we looking for this, this foreman while we're here? Oh yes, did we, uh, did we figure out what he looks like before we Decided oh, to come. Darn, what a great idea. We'll just have to ask every man wearing card hearts. Or oh, oh, we could just <laughs> shout, um, you know, Cameron Nian and see if anyone reacts. Does a lady shout? I don't know anymore. It's been so many years since not finishing school. But we are in no, a pub. No, the lady does not shout. So, would you like to shout? Us? According to my notes, uh, Nairn is a blue worker, a uh, blue collar worker, uh, and, and he keeps to himself after his wife left him and drinks a lot. So it <sighs> shouldn't be too hard to find in a pub. Right? We'll just look for the lonely one at the bar, not talking to anyone. Yes, yeah, we'll look for has... the blue collar drinker in the pub. Mm. <laughs> Should be what would maybe. I'm sorry. What did you say, Edie? Oh, I was just saying it should be simple. Yeah, and we just have to look for someone with an especially um, melancholy look on his face, perhaps. I will Excellent. stay with Carl, yes? Yes. A quick question, Summers. No mm. reason. I'm just wondering, did you come armed with your firearms all this way? I, I, I am butler, not gun gunslinger that's true mm. but it's yes but and then i just want to tap lightly on his waistcoat um okay well let's <laughs> i um is he packing again no no he's oh a trim figure <laughs> but um pardon me <laughs> why don't you roll um spot hidden for me oh right. or actually roll can you do an idea roll that's i did thought you might say something worse and so i clicked a button real fast before you could change it um but then you said something <laughs> that would have been better for me so now i regret that impulsive reaction <laughs> Well, I it's it's spot hidden yeah. does it, spot hidden is the wrong thing for this. Yeah. But if you just no, have idea, make an idea, idea you got it. Great. So um <laughs> you you remember in traveling, uh and from traveling with Summers, you know, it's been a long trip. You guys have you've seen a lot. He does uh travel with a shotgun, but he does not carry pistols. Okay. I see right through you, sir, and I appreciate you. Hmm. You know, that is a stellar point, Mimble. Uh, let me make sure I have my handgun in my bag. You don't know how cheeky men can get in pubs. Do you mean to shoot this man? No, of course not, darling. But you remember what happened in Monaco. Mm, yes, that he had it coming. I don't I know what happened in Monaco, but I do know a, a gentleman has gone missing. I think kidnapping could be the cause, and in which case, fisticuffs may be an option. Okay, Darling, so I wish you had told me. Do you want me to stay at car or come in in case of fisticuffs? We'll scream if we need you, yes? Good, yes. I have very good hearing. Yes, we may need to get a quick getaway. I don't know why, but just in case, the car is probably best. 
Okay. Ooh. All right. So, uh, Summer stays outside with the car, but very wary of your screams. So he's not in the <laughs> car. He's standing outside of it, looking very tough. Um, he's apparently like just a secret badass, I guess. Um, sure. Uh, and then as y'all enter, so um, the pub, it's, it's, it's like a long hall. It's, you know, a rectangle. It's, it's very long. And the bar is at the very, I'm just blocking myself. This isn't helpful. The bar is at the very back of the hall. Um, it doesn't take up the, the full wall. It's in the center. And it's a large wooden bar. And, you know, everything about the pub is, it's wood, like worn, dark wood. The floor is wood, the bar is wood. The There are four almost monolithic tables in the center. This is where a majority of the seating is. And they're uh, arranged in like a square, all connected together. And there is, um, so it looks like sort of just one massive table. Uh, and there's stools, like wooden stools all around that. And that's that's the main seating of this place. It's just everybody kind of around one big thing. Um, uh, towards the back, however, near the bar, there are some other chairs and some um, kind of like ledges, not like a full table, but you know, like a almost like a floating shelf sort of thing where you just, just enough room for your beverages. Um, and there's a few uh, folks in that at back there. Most everybody in the bar looks like a worker um you know they're wearing sort of coveralls there are folks here that are, are clearly more of the farmer variety um it's it's mostly um mostly men drinking um and in the back in the bar itself are, are a, a a man and a woman sort of tending the bar <clears throat> I, I i grab my friends uh, i'm a little intimidated by the whole scene and i say I don't think they'll have scones or sherry here. Oh no, absolutely not. Is that what you were expecting? Well, I've never seen a pub without scones or sherry. Oh, you I... pub. Oh, next order of operation. I don't know if I can take the lead in this. I. I mean, Jennifer. Do you feel comfortable in pubs? <laughs> and let's just like line up behind Jennifer in a little <laughs> train of like a conga line. No, yes. Darlings, I can take the lead if you really want me to. I was oh. thinking, instead of just shouting a name, we do shout a name, but um, not like we're looking for them. See if anyone looks up to see if we can discern who might be named. Family? Oh, we could let uh, uh, Mobile what was the name? tell us about the Nian Cat. Nian Cat? Oh, yes, Nian Cat. Oh, sorry, Jennifer, I didn't hear the name that you wanted to shout. Oh, Perhaps. Uh, well, I, I don't want to shout it. Uh, I think that would be a bit um, disruptive. But I do think if we say it loud in a conversation, it wouldn't be the same as just barging into a place and shouting all over, you know? I will say uh, the pub is as it is very busy, is rather loud, um, you know, and there's laughter and conversations so much so that even though the three of you are clearly not the regular style customers, you go mostly unnoticed. It's not like a, an empty saloon where you walk in and people are like, oh, it's everyone is really caught up in their conversations. There's a lot of laughing and drinking and eating and things of that nature. Does anyone find it strange? No one's offered us a table. We're supposed to go to the bartender. Oh, well, yes. perhaps we do that, and and once we blend in, of course, with our beverages of mead or whatever, what have you, then we'll find our next course of action. Yes? All right. Uh, I'm still Let's just clinging to, to Jennifer's back. <laughs> All right, so you make your way to the bar. Is that? All right, cool. So at the bar um, towards the left side is a, uh, a gentleman... Um, he's got dark curly hair. Uh, he's sort of just wiping the bar down. And on the right side of the bar is uh, uh, a woman. They're both maybe in their in their forties or so. Um, the woman looks slightly younger, and and she's uh, putting up like clean pint glasses, and you know they're tending uh, folks as as they come up to order things. 
You go, Jennifer. Get us three beverages of whatever all these people are having. Scotch. Let's introduce Mimble to Scotch. Yes. Okay. Um. We'll do uh, three scotches neat. All right. So you walk up to uh, the man. Uh, are you on the left side of the bar? Or uh, <clears throat> yes. uh hello. Hey, three scotches neat. Yeah. Three. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. Three scotches. You sure? All right. Margaret, three scotches for the wee lasses. And Is he making eyes at you? Back. You see this woman in the back go, oh, okay. She turns, she goes, really? All right. And then brings you three scotches. All right. That will be a, a, a shelling. Uh, all right. I'll uh, reach into my pocket and pull out a shilling. Great. And he takes your shilling. <laughs> Anything else? Known, ask him about men. You know, I can hear you. Last year. Him, tell him I I know. Hey. She's there. She's shy. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Hey. My, my wee, my wee sister. She's like that. Been like that ever since she was a baron. Totally shy. Would always ask me to say things. I get that. Are you sisters? Uh, no, we're just very good friends. That makes sense. You didn't look alike. <laughs> right, I, so can I get you any food? Any haggis? Scotch egg? Although here we just cook egg. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know, I'm just too in love with you saying Bairn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm distracted by everything. Uh, just do the accent more. Ask him, ask him. <laughs> Tell him. Uh, does he know a man named Mern? He looks at you, Jennifer. Like he's clearly heard that, but he just waits. It's very polite. <laughs> a man named Mern. Hey, Mern. He's over there, actually, in the corner. Do you know him? <laughs> no. Right, no. then I'm going to give you a wee warning before you go chat with him. He's, he's been here. A while today, um, he's sort of taken up residence in our corner there. Um, so if you chat with him, he's a good man. He's just a bit, mm, well, might be a, you know, it might be a fun chat. He might be a bit loose tongued if you get my drift. Um, um, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> Then in that case, would I could I please get uh, one of your finest eggs and a jammy dodger? A jammy dodger, right? Yeah. Yes, and uh, I and... also see if 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 it's for a neon, um, you might do better with a, another scotch. That was just the ticket I was going to ask for. It's next. not really a jammy dodger kind of guy. True, but you know, way to a stomach is through a heart or something. Hey, hey, okay. Edie, I remember when you you embroidered that on the pillow. Oh, yes, yes. You know... Oh, that's lovely, miss. That's so nice of you to share that information. Good for you. He's just so tall and so brawn. The bartender? Yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> um, anyway, thank you for the tip. Right, so... What will be? I... Jammy Dodger and another scotch and um, an egg and uh, um, here's a here's she just hands over like five pounds. Is that enough? Five pounds? Yes. Uh, not pounds. You're sorry. you're uh, you're American. Yes, I'm sorry. Is is it is it lira here? Is it no no? Uh, um, uh, would you take pound sterling? Uh that's a lot of money. And oh. I wouldn't be wandering around here with your fancy dresses and your American accents flashing that much money. Well, oh, Jennifer, <laughs> tell him. She says in a loud stage whisper, um, maybe it could be his if he knows anything about the legend of the Hellhound. <laughs> you don't need to pay me to find out the legend of the Hellhound. You can ask any schoolgirl about that. Oh, we, we have, um, actually. Oh, great. Um, 
Is this a is this a sipping scotch or is this better shot? Uh, do, if you want a sipping scotch, maybe leave some of that money out. I can get you that. Yeah, maybe. If um, you catch my drift. Uh, yes. Um. Since I, uh, it's it's Mimble's first scotch. Hmm. So I think we might want to. to... Oh, Ari, Ari, Ari. So, uh, do you like? Do you want something peaty, or are you more of a like a smooth drinker? There's okay. So, scotch. Is is uh oh uh oh? <laughs> this is, I'm sorry. This is not the bartender here. This is a, <laughs> I was a like, character moment. <laughs> All right. There's four types of scotch in Scotland from the the four different locations. All right, from the Highlands and the Lowlands, and you know, east and west coast. All right. So, do you like the smell of dirt? Mimble. Very much so. Hey, all right. Um, can uh, Margaret get us a Glen Ferrick, eh? I, I. She, uh, she. He says, "I." Is she's pointing to the? She points to like, mm. like her finger goes up the shelves and points mm. to that one. He goes, yeah, and he nods, and she pulls down, um, kind of this bottle. It's a bit dusty. It clearly doesn't get poured a lot. Um, and she comes over with it, and she's very like reverent, and hands him the bottle of scotch. Right. May I? Hey. Well, I want to investigate this bottle of scotch and uh, appraise it. Okay. All right. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, roll appraisal. Great. So um, I t- I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know the conversion rate, but were it uh, you appraise it, and it's basically the worth is about what would be three hundred fifty dollars today. Yeah, for the for this. Bottle. Oh my! This is so and so many pounds, and I do believe that it's um, uh, seventy five proof, and is um, uh, 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 an amber toasty color. I want to impress him with my knowledge. <laughs> hey, hey. Margaret, we got a little scotch expert over here. I've never tasted it before, but I have looked upon many bottles. Right, I bet you have. I bet you have. Yeah. Right. Ah. All right. So he he pulls another glass for you, and then pours the drink and like puts it in front of you, and then just waits. Well, we'll go talk to Nan now. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, can I get a glass of water for my friend after her drink? Yeah, hey. All right. Jennifer's gonna take back the cheap scotch, like take it back, and then uh, an extra glass of that as well. Mm, right. He basically he pours you all three three glasses of the uh, the Glenfiddich, and then he uh, pours another one for Nairn, um, and then he takes one pound from your five pounds. <laughs> It's a lot. This is 1928. Edie, perhaps you should offer the gift since it was your idea. Uh, the, the drink? Yes, the gifts you've gotten for Nairn. The... All right, I'm gonna go oh. get your egg and your jammy dodger. He goes to the back. All right, let's gather up our things and, and head towards this lonely man at the bar. Yeah, so he's in one of the um, the chairs that are sort of on the le- along the left wall. He's in one closest to the bar. Um, he, what does he look like? He looks like a man in work <laughs> clothes. Um, so yeah, uh, what color is his collar? Blue. It's a ah! blue collar. <laughs> yeah, good on ya. <laughs> Must be the right one. Got him. Got him. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he's, uh, he's sitting in like, uh, basically like a foreman's coverall <clears throat> and he's sitting alone in the corner. He's got, uh, a pint, uh, glass in front of him and he's got three empty pint glasses next to that. And then two, um, sort of shot glasses next to that. Um, and yeah, he, as you get closer, you notice he's got, 
a very unpleasant earthy smell. Um, much like the Glen Village, earthy. Yes, much much like that, but uh, not. It's it's worse. It it doesn't smell. He doesn't smell good. He 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 smells like a man who is a hard worker, and also has spent the last two days in a pub drinking. Jennifer, how would you like to approach this? Um, I assume Scotch first. Take your lead. Often... I've never um, uh, really impressed anyone today except for that bartender back there. I think I have a plan about <clears throat> how to impress our friend and get him to warm up to us. Go for it. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Cameron Narn. Narn? 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 Cameron. Hey. Have you ever seen an American drink scotch for the first time? I kind of say I have. Well, would you like to? Uh, the drink's on me, if you do. All right. Lovely. We were just looking for an authentic Scotsman to have our first scotch with in Scotland. Enjoy. Oh, interests. Yes, thank you. And then she'll like hand out the drinks and then just to seat everybody right next to him. And you put one in front of him? Uh, not yet. She'll keep it off oh, okay. to the side, but All it's right. like implied that it is for him after he spends time with us. Okay. So, uh, is your first time drinking scotch? Oh, no, not mine, but my friend is. But this is Oh, you more she of lovely? a sherry girl. Mm, mm. Are, are, I... are you ready for something you've never seen before? I prepare yourself. Your life will be forever changed when you witness an American woman sip this scotch. And Mimble takes a tiny, tiny <laughs> little. Gotta have more than that, lass. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. Um, more? More, you say? Mm. I'll drink friend. with you, Mimble. I will drink with you. Ah, cheers. Cheers. And, and how should we drink this? Here, practice with this water, and she'll hand him like one of the glasses of water. He, you give her, wa give him water. Yeah, to show us how to drink this scotch. Yes. No. Yes. Bath first. All right. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, no, what? He pushes the water back, like disgusted. Give me, give me the scotch. Just give him the scotch. Turn him the other glass of scotch. So he he smells and he's like, oh, <laughs> all right, all right. Um, you go, you go, sniff it with your mouth open. You can see taste it before you taste it. Hey, maybe not that open. Oh, <laughs> no, you're sniffing. You're not. You're not coughing on it. <clears throat> she slurps through her tongue, uh, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then um, takes take. a big old gulp. Oh, all right, all right. So you take sap and let it sit in your mouth a bit. Let like swish around. Right. And then swallow. <clears throat> Scotland! Yeah, what, what you taste? <laughs> what do you taste, you pirate? <laughs> what do you taste? For Scotland. It, um, it tastes of, ooh, a truth telling and um, a bog. That was pretty good, actually. It's a bog. <laughs> That's, hey. That's, it comes from a bog, actually. That's where you get Pete. Well, now drink it down and we'll be ready for truth telling. Jennifer leans over to Edie and she's like, I can't believe that we all went to the same finishing school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mimble's always been the most eccentric, lovely one among us. We've always been eccentric, but. We did learn some things there. And then she curtsies after she sets down her scotch glass. 
I, I, um, uh, Even for Arthur. <clears throat> what? Huh? What? Uh, what? Now, tell us more about you, Mr. Nair. Why is this? We are tourists, and we're searching for a, a, a fun evening of diversion. Uh, with me? Would you like another scotch? Aye. I'll be right back. I'm gonna let them handle their whatever's <laughs> happening there. So do you work around here? Uh... I, I did. I do. I, I don't know. You know, on the way to the pub, we saw the most magnificent golf course. Well, of course, it was under construction from what we could see from the road, but uh, it seems as though it'll be a beautiful sight. Of course, uh, us being women folk, we would never presume to leave the clubhouse. Um, I'm gonna need y'all to roll deception. Do we have deception, or maybe I don't fast know talk. if we have deception. Fast yeah, talk. Yeah, fast yeah, talk. yeah. Fast talk. Okay. Can I charm instead? <laughs> no. Do you need me to roll, even though I got up to go get a scotch? Um, I'll say Edie and Mimble can roll. <gasps> she got it. Nailed it. Mimble is a saleswoman. She is well-versed in gemology and knows how to tell someone something is reputable when indeed it is not if it is the way she will pay her rent this month. Yes, Edie, however, did really fail. Um, but yeah. All right, so wow. he's like, <laughs> this isn't Glenfiddich. <Glenn's> <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been had, this bar is wet. <laughs> um, right. Uh, the, the golf course is closed. Um, oh, you know of it. I, I, I was the foreman there. <laughs> The foreman won an impressive position, so you order about all the other workers. I try to. They don't always listen to me. <clears throat> How's that? Friends? You seem like a very listen to a sort of man. Oh, yes, Edie. Edie knows, yes? I, I agree. You're very, um, uh, aesthetically pleasing. She's not bad at it. She's not good at flirting. No. I'm not... I'm not on the market. I... I oh, good. I'm I've, got, I've got a wife. Who are you now? Where's your ring? Or is that not a thing? <laughs> well, I mean, she left me. But... I... I did not leave. <clears throat> no. I yeah, she left. Fell. And you're right. I pat him on the back. Still Get it out. I'm still married. I I moved for her, you know. I I went to her family's home uh, in Abernet, and I was really oh, I was very successful before I met her. Had lots of big industry jobs in Dundee, and I went to Abernet with her and broke. I hurt my back. Couldn't work anymore. For her. But she didn't care. Didn't care. You That's broke your back. Why? I, 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 I hurt my back. I didn't break my back. That would. I hurt my back. I So I, I was sort of retired and I wouldn't have made enough money for her. And, but. I wouldn't have been hurt if I didn't go to our shoddy little town. But this job was different. This Mr. Mr. McMillan found me and he gave me a real job. And it was going to be great. And we were doing good. And, you know, it's not my fault. You've got the workers yelling at me because they're getting sick. And then Mr. McMillan saying they're not going fast enough. And it's just... I'm in the middle, you see. I'm in the middle, and you can't. I'm sorry. This is not right interesting. Right in the middle. Oh no! This is exactly why we came to Scotland, is it not, Edie? Oh yes. We we love uh, local lore and, and and mythology and and ghost stories and and um anything like that. Do you do you know any local tales? Jennifer comes yeah. back with the whiskey. Sets why, the scotch. 
Oh, I didn't say ghost story. I didn't uh, say ghost story. Oh, oh, we had some strange dreams is all. Yeah, from some schoolgirls, it's nothing. And then she'll just like drink the scotch a little bit quicker. <laughs> Did you say uh, Mr. McMillan? Aye. Wasn't that the, the fellow from the newspaper article that we read? Uh, oh, I right. read that. I, 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 um... I... Drink some more scotch! That's why I didn't, can't, if I have a job, you see, because the golf course closed and, um, he's gone and I didn't know where he is. And no one found him, and I didn't. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. No, no, of <laughs> course not, dear. Oh, we would never think you had anything to do with it. But do you what? know who might? And the hey. schoolgirls did say something about her. Uh, what, a curse? Perhaps? Did they? Oh, they, they saw so many ghosts. Things. They, they saw many hellhounds. Things. Yes, many things. Strange. Such a rich rich lore and culture that you have here. Uh, I, well, I didn't, I kind of see there's a curse. There's definitely something though. So we, we were working and it was all going, it was great. And you know, but then in, in the clubhouse, anyone who worked in the clubhouse, they started getting headaches and it was like, they're getting a flu. It was just in the clubhouse, though. It was, it was like the plasterers and the carpenters, and you know the landscaping was going great, and that was fine. It was just anyone who spent any time in the clubhouse, they get they get sick, and then and then they couldn't. I, they would stop coming to work, and I it got so I couldn't find people to work. No one would work, and it's we were still making real gains on it. We were still playing ahead. And Mr. McMillan, he didn't appreciate how difficult it was for me to get workers. And it was, it just kept getting worse. And then it got weird. It weird. got really weird. It's weird that you bring up ghosts. Because they were saying they got ghostly. They saw ghostly things. They always said ghostly, I think. I cannot remember anyone saying ghost, but ghostly, definitely a word they said and they said there are strange sounds that would come from empty rooms and then they'd go in the room and no one's there it was just empty it sounds and like a, a classically haunted clubhouse did no one attempt to exercise any ghosts well so you know at first we thought maybe it was a gas leak and we checked and that was you know, there's no gas leak, and then we thought maybe, you know, it's uh, the gas leak ghosts. I get it. Well, no, I mean, you know, a gas leak it can be ghastly. No, I meant because you see things. Right. Oh. And that we thought, you know, uh, someone thought maybe mold, but the dampness, it used to be damp. We got rid of that months ago with the insulation. It's all been fixed. And then, you know, there was. Uh, Weird, and I thought it was tomfoolery. I did. I thought, you know, this town, the golf course has been sitting empty since 1916, you know, 12 years, just sat in there. So, you know, maybe some kids, local kids sit up or something, or, or squatters, you know, uh, trying to scare us out. But it was, it was like the temperature would change. And it was like the air was like, electric and some of the men they they say they see things and there'd be like sparks in the air and floating globes of light it was ridiculous the things they were saying they said that the shadow the walls and shadows would move and like dance i Nern, I, I know you're into your cups well and fully and I know we're just three hours. Oh, blast you women, I ain't into my I'm But, fine. but uh, it seems the only answer to your problems. Well, have you ever been inside this clubhouse to see for yourself? I am the foreman. Oh. That's where I worked. Why didn't you get sick? I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time 
in one place. I, I oversaw the entire thing. Also, I knew people were getting sick, so... I... But... It got worse. There was two weeks ago, an electrician walked off the job after an hour. An hour! What part of... Were they... Did the sicknesses seem to be concentrated in one part of the house? Or is it extended exposure? Like, did... Was it like they'd work two days and then leave until that one man worked an hour? Or did it get shorter and shorter that they would work? Or did it happen as you were excavating a different part, renovating a different part of the building? I think everyone got sick anywhere in the clubhouse, but there were some folks that said they saw things on the second floor, like ghosts in the ballroom or, um, you know, uh, I never saw any of it, honestly. But were these ghosts in the ballroom good dancers? I, I, I don't, I can't, I, I... Just wondering, just for I a never minute. saw anything, but, but a couple days before Macmillan went messing, there was three men, honest men, who said they saw a ghost in the ballroom and, and, and they left and they were terrified. They must have, they're honest men, not, you know, they weren't lazy, they were trying to get out of it. It's. Did they see these ghosts primarily in the daytime? I, no, it wasn't always ghosts. It was old things. And we tried working different hours. We did. We tried to change the schedule to, to avoid it. it. It was at all times. Nothing worked. I did try. I did. I believe you. <sighs> I, for one would really love to see this clubhouse. I can't go back there. Why not? It's too difficult. Well, understandable, but... Oh, go on. I... I... I have to say, Cameron, you seem like a very reasonable and level-headed man to me. And I think that this town has quite disparaged you, and you should prove once and for all that you can prove to these tourists who not, are not suspicious or connected to any of these dealings, and you could prove to us, and we can help you clear your name. What do you say? Clear my name from what? Um, just, just saying in case you needed any name clearing, if anyone thought, you know, less of you or for any what? reason at all. Not no that one's talking would. about you. No, no one's saying that you're no. drunk and your wife left you. No one's saying it. No one. Not at all, darling. Just, no. just saying. Just saying. I, uh, I can't, uh, you know what, you're weird, all three of you are weird, and I wish you luck, I want none of it, I, and he pulls out this big ring of keys and just throws it on the table. I was literally about to be like, can I pickpocket him? <laughs> yeah, and he just goes, have that. <laughs> I grab the keys. All right. I... Ding, 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 ding. Well, <laughs> thank you, sir. I... Mm. And then he continues to drink the new glass of scotch. Well, 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 ladies. Um, enjoy your scotch, sir. Mm. <laughs> Jennifer will stand up and start walking away. <laughs> Jennifer, well done! What regular Sherlock Holmes we are! I mean... A right. little bit of uh, liquor gets things done quicker. I think that's the... <laughs> right? Amen. I'm adding that to a needle point. Ooh, yes! I'd love, love to see that in your hand. Uh, I think that would be a great pillow. Liquor gets things done quicker. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it needs to like trail off and just have like a spill as the <laughs> R on the end. <clears throat> All right. Um, so y'all leave him there um, drinking. Um, and do you head, like, do you leave the pub? Are you set to go to the golf course? Um, I can't think of anyone else that might have information on Arthur's whereabouts before we leave. The only person we haven't thought more about is the detective. Mm -hmm. But he won't be at the pub. 
No, and the detective is in, is in Dundee. He's not um, in this village. He's uh, a, a Dundee investigator. You can go to Dundee, um, but yeah, it, it's a, a bit of a drive. we for dinner. Probably, probably, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, my friends, shall we rejoin our dear friend Summer? Um, <clears throat> yes. I, I just, I'm just going to buy a bottle of that scotch for testing and bring it back to the house. Excellent. I think, that the- I think it could help us divine ghosts. Agreed. I think it will be very helpful in our search. Hmm. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So you get scotch um, and then you head back out to meet Summers, who's still standing by the car. Ladies. Summers, you won't believe the time we had. Scotch is magnificent. I do believe this. Do you know of it? Is it your drink of choice? No. Vodka. I knew mm. it. Mm. Right. So, where do we drive to? Well, I... I still want to talk to someone who's lived in this town long enough, like a local historian or something, because he said it was been sitting empty for how many years? Are you asking oh. me? Uh, the golf course, you mean? Chatting with- mm. Yes, excellent. <clears throat> well, perhaps we could see what else is around. Is there any other building, like a town hall or like a local library? Um, yeah. Edie would like uh, sure. to talk to like a Let's town see. historian and find out a little bit more about the town's history, about like mm-hmm. what was in that building before it got shut down and renovated and why it was sitting so empty. If and, like kids had problems there or hooligans went like smashing there's, around. Yeah, or... in this area, there's not really like uh, a, a town hall because it's not really a town so much as just <laughs> huge tracts of land. Um, <laughs> it's just sort of his historical um homelands and there is there is a pub and there are some farms etc but to get like a, a library library you would need to go to dundee okay well edie uh i do believe there is a, a wealth of locals within the pub that we just left if we wish to return and try and ask some questions there they might not be historians or um, academics or scholars but they might know this area fairly well i agree oh i say let's do it okay i'll go back in i'm going to talk to that bartender one more time okay all right (laughs) Um, so i'm I'm gonna stand like 10 feet back (laughs) so yeah when you go back in the uh the gentleman is is not there but uh margaret is still out he you know he might be in the back there's there's a hallway to the right of the bar that leads to like bathrooms in the kitchen probably but uh it's just margaret at the bar and when you go back in okay uh she'll catch um i'm sorry margaret is it oh hello lovelace hey hello margaret <clears throat> i um i was oh no you can't i can't you kind of talk to me if i don't know your name that's not fair that's not right. fair that's not <clears throat> right um uh, my name is my name is Edie, and uh, are you okay, love? Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, you're uh, you're, I love your accent. Uh, it, it's great. I I um, oh, she's, that's like, very starts, sweet of you. <laughs> she starts blushing and just like kind of fidgeting around with like napkins and just folding them into shapes uh, while talking with Margaret. I um I I love your outfit. Do you know where I can find um some clothes so I look less like me? <clears throat> well. Um, you know, I don't know that I've ever been asked that. That's a, uh, are you looking to, to buy clothes? That is one of the things. I feel like I stick out a bit too much and I want to make sure that people want to talk to me and I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Honestly, lass, I don't think there's a place around here to buy clothes. You'd have to go to Dundee. Perfect. Uh, also, while I'm in Dundee, do you know any uh, town historians? Of Dundee? Yep. No, I have a cousin who likes to read a lot who lives in Dundee. I wouldn't say he's a historian necessarily, but he does read a lot and he does talk a lot about history. But I don't think he actually knows anything about history. He just talks a lot about history, but I don't think that's what she meant either. No, just someone who's lived here for a really... Here or in Dundee? 
Um, well, someone who'd know a lot about here. Even oh, if I've them. lived here a long time. All my life, actually. Our we own this bar, my husband and I do. Excellent. Um, so when uh, it comes to the, the, the town uh, local, I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. I don't talk to many strangers. Um, Easy, are, are you doing all right? Do you, I'm okay. She's really okay. pretty. She's Ooh. absolutely <laughs> stunning, that is true. That's very kind of you. Um, Margaret, darling. My name is Jennifer. Uh, this is my... It's lovely to meet you, Jennifer. Um, yes, can you tell us what you know about this area? Oh, well, um, you know, it's mostly just a little farm town um, and some, you know, the woods in the back. And uh, it's a lovely little town, lovely little workers. Um, you know, the most interesting thing about the, of the, this area is the golf course, of course, you know, because it was it's actually designed by a famous architect. It is. And he's got actually a book he published, but he didn't mention this golf course in his book because you see, he, he made this golf course. It was made in, when was it? Let's see, I was, it was just before our wedding, so 1909, it had to be 1909 it was made, and, um, but it failed, it did, it failed, it did, and it's been sitting there just sort of empty since about 1916 it has, so 12 years, nothing there, nothing at all, and none of his books mention it, they don't mention our little town, if they did, we'd have, I think we'd have tourists, and maybe, you know, it'd have more, um, it'd be busier, that'd be great, I can't believe he didn't, he didn't want to mention it anymore, but, you know, since the Macmillans have been back this summer, we've had a lot more, a lot more, um, uh, folks here in the pub, it's been great, all the workers coming in, um, lately they've been coming in a lot more, I think, I'm surprised they get any work done at all there as often as they're here, what was the the architect's name, and was he from here oh. as well? Um, no, no, no. He, he um, he's English. He was. Hi, he's an Englishman. What was his name? Um, Alabaster, or or um, um. You know, I I don't know. I don't know. I, I my husband would know. He'd remember. Um, something with an A though, for sure. Okay, and uh. Why do you think it failed, you knowing this area so well? Oh, I, d I don't know. I think, you know, it was, it was his first golf course. It was the architect, and he's made many other golf courses since then. And that's what I think it just, hmm, I don't know if it was the location or if it was just architecturally speaking. Honestly, only one or two of the holes actually is any good. That's why the Mr. McMillan, Arthur, he did, he was changing out all, almost all the whole 16 holes he redid out of the 18. That's a quite a lot of progress. And then, and then it got shut down. Oh, no, no, it was, it was shut down, you see, and, um, 1916, you see, and then, uh, Arthur McMillan bought it in May of this year. So it's, I guess it is shut down right now, but only because he's gone missing, not not for any business reasons, because it hasn't opened actually technically, because they were still doing um, renovations. Okay. All right. Well, during uh... this time, uh, 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 Mimble has wandered off. She was a little nervous to talk to locals, but someone asked her to arm wrestle, and so she's begun that. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so why don't you roll me a uh, brawl? Yes. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, no. Oh, uh, who? Uh, me? Oh, uh, uh, mm. <laughs> No, that's a fail. That's a fail. Do I spend? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> no. Twenty-two points of luck. Do you want to push your arm it. wrestling? Um, uh, and perhaps have disastrous consequences. Tempting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, you don't have to. Oh, I got it. <laughs> All right. So, so you're arm wrestling with a, a local gentleman you know, a local worker, he, he thinks it's, you know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of cute that you want to arm wrestle. You know, oh, and I'm so, very uh, good with my hands. I am a gemologist. 
And so at first he starts to kind of tease you, you're like, ah, oh. and then he starts to push your hand down and it looks like he's going to win. And he like is, is laughing and joking with his friends that this young girl is, you know, trying to arm wrestle him. I and wanna... then you slam. Oh, I, I, I wanna... if you want to describe it. Yes. Well, all of that. And then um, it's not really my strength. It's that I have such like mechanical dexterity from my years of working with gemstones and like fine motor movement that I just sort of twist his wrist in such a way that he just like tries to let go in pain and I slam it down. <laughs> Um, yeah, and he screams a little bit, like a high pitch, like <laughs> sort of when you do it, and he goes. <clears throat> and then he just walks walks away very dejected, while everybody around is laughing at him and patting you on the back, and you're like, ah, <laughs> yes, nimble buckworth, yes, gemologist, and I'm passing out my card that doesn't have any information, just my name, and yeah. gemologist. <laughs> So it's like, yes. I had a drink. Bring your heirlooms over to um the manse. Yes, uh, in the woods, uh, the Crow Hall, Crowwood Hall. Yeah, and they cheer, and someone brings you a pint, and you're, you know, you're you've made so many new friends, thing. and they start <laughs> cheering your name, Mambo, Mambo, oh. Mambo, Mambo. Oh no. Anyway, uh, should should we go? I'll buy a bottle of scotch before we leave. All right. Um, are you? Were you done with your conversation with the bartenders? Anything else you wanted to ask? Um, just what was on the land before the architect, architect built there, like pre nineteen oh nine. It's about twenty years ago. I think it was just more farmland. Not anything exciting. Oh, I wish oh. we had something more exciting than a golf course. But no, no hellhound sightings there. Oh, oh, the hellhounds. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. No, no, there are no hellhound sightings in that. No, no, those are in the Crowwood. And who owned the land before the architect bought it? Oh, well, the McIntosh family has owned it for, for centuries. That's uh, Arthur McMillan is, is related to the McIntosh clan. That's how, he got the, that's how he got the land. It's his ancestral homeland. Excellent. Mm. Well, thank you for all the information. I have shopping to do, and uh, I'll take that bottle of dusty scotch back there. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> and she sells you the bottle for however much it costs, which is right. a lot. It's a gift for Summers. Dinner you are good to Summers. <laughs> he's What's my, going on there? He's my platonic life mate. <laughs> Yeah, he's your butler. He's just your butler. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have to call him because my family shames me for having friendship with the help. <laughs> ah, I see. Okay. All right. Okay, so... Damn the rich. I am estranged so, from my family. Mimble has now made friends with, with everyone. Um... <gasps> oh, oh, yes, you know. Will we turn, please? <laughs> Stop. No. Gemologist. <laughs> <clears throat> well, will we miss dinner? Or perhaps we should... Well, we have these keys now. Well, it'll, we'll have just enough time to shower, get settled, read a little in the library at the family record history, and then, you know, dinner time. Ooh, I love when you get naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after dinner, we take that bottle of scotch to the golf course. Or yes. one of those bottles of scotch. At night? I, I do very much believe in ghosts, but do you not? No, I do. I just think that would be the best time to find a ghost. Sure, yes. Perhaps we offer them some scotch. Oh. Oh, the scotch was for us, but uh, right, the right. ghost they might want some as well. Incorporeal, it'd be difficult to go right through them. No, anyway. no, it, I, I did read a story about uh, whiskey being the water of life and then using it in some sort of ritual after death. Besides Maybe getting we drunk. Offer some the ghost. Maybe it likes scotch. Fair. Yes, it is Scotland, so uh, I would say the odds are quite high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think we should talk to Crystal a little bit. We did come here to spend time with her. Um, and maybe we could ask her about her nightmare. Do you mind yes. if we, we investigate first thing in the morning tomorrow? I just. I, I want to see what the night looks like with the nightmares. 
tonight. I think Ooh. I just want to stay at the house tonight and see yeah, how that's... everyone handles the nighttime. Are you interested in nightmares. having nightmares? Um, I... Well, I mean, it's not that I was just having nightmares. I was just... Well, my plan was to stay up for most of the evening. You know, just reading in the library. And then if I just happen to hear something since I'm so close to Crystal and Mr. Kilburn's room... Yes, that's an excellent idea. I'm so close to Mr. Kilburn's room. I'll watch Mr. Kilburn's room in particular. <laughs> oh, thank God, that would be great if you could. I, I, I don't, I don't want to. I just. I work, worry of if course. one shouts that they both shout. I would really prefer to be closer to Crystal. Excellent. So Summers is just standing there while you guys are talking. So look at me like that. Summers where... going to help me keep watch. So where do we go? Oh, uh, here's your gift, and we'll go back home now. To this, Crowwood Hall, sir. Scotch is for me. Oh, oh, not the scotch. Swash it back and give some of the vodka. Oh, look, <laughs> they just had it sitting there. No one drinks vodka. All right. Mm. He just puts it in the car. So, where do ladies? Back to Crowwood the house. Hall, if you will. I just realized leaning back in character makes makes me farther from my mic, so I'm sorry if I was very <laughs> quiet. No, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Crowwood Hall, yes? Yes. yes. Either you have learned so much, do you want to drive? Um, Go for it, Edie. I mean, I did have those two scotches. Ah, yes. Let's, let's go. And, so all right. and we all know seat. drinking improves the acuity, yes? That's true. We don't quicker. know such things. Gets yeah. things done quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's vary uh, for no good reason. Um, so Edie, I'm going to have you roll drive. And I'm going to say that um, given that Summers is is sober, um, I'm going to give you 10 points of help, basically. <gasps> when you when you roll this, it's you're uh, at 28 instead of 18. Drive. Whatever tomorrow brings, I'll see there. Okay, cool. Oh. But you failed by 30, not by 40. So that's... that's My lucky good. song didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I ground the gears to a halt. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely like a stop and go. You guys get to Crow Hall, but it's like, it's a lot of this. And you, you know, might have might have hit an animal on the way. Ooh. Like, uh, that's for research. It's fine. Yeah, so it's it's definitely um, a much longer ride than it should be, and very uncomfortable. But the whole time, Summers is going, "Good, yes, yes, good. You learn, you learn. This is how you learn." <laughs> yes, and uh, shout out to JV's comment. Uh, don't drink and drive, everybody. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, no. don't, don't don't drink. Do that drive. isn't good enough. Do not do this in real life. This is a terrible, most of what we're doing today is terrible ideas. <laughs> oh, God. Um, are people using my characters as a, a, a demonstration <laughs> of how they should live their lives? <laughs> well, no, that's probably why you failed your role, because you're, you're drunk, so. Um, oh. All right. All right, so you eventually get back to the house. At this point, I'm going to say it's about 4.30. Um, that drive, although previously it was about... 10 minutes this time was about 30 minutes i'm improving yes yes Back. Oh, work, Edie. i'll just <clears throat> get out of now the car stayed on the road the entire time oh i'm going to have to journal this da remember tomorrow is red day oh thank you red day da <clears throat> okay so you arrive at crow hall um, well, uh, Keating heard the car coming uh, for a while down the driveway and has been standing there for a while very like ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he's waiting for you and I, when you arrive he's like oh um, good good sure old girl <clears throat> Keating mm. I this time I stayed on the road for the first time and then she's like Drop off the keys and just wait for her. Congratulations. Congratulations. We are all very proud, obviously. 
Obviously. Obviously. <clears throat> well, shall we dress for dinner? Yes, of course. You did say it takes you three hours. So oh, no, I'm running late. Yes, um, you know, maybe maybe you can can um uh, go quick out this time. Mm? Mm. Right. Uh, Mimble was going to rush to her room and put on her most elegant evening gown, like something really ostentatious. Okay, I love that. So you all uh, just go to your, your rooms and, and bathe and get ready and whatnot? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Summers starts to go with you, Edie, and, uh, and Keating actually stops him and is like, mm, uh, it's not, not, not appropriate, sir. You come downstairs with us. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. And and uh, Summers looks very like. Okay, <laughs> I love you, bestie. <laughs> and then he leans in very close to Keating's ear and goes, "If she's harmed while I am downstairs, you are responsible." <laughs> and then he just leans back. And then she'll like pull Keating aside and be like, "Keating." Uh- We've known each other for quite some time, but if anything happens to Summers, I will hold you personally accountable. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> oh, he's been our butler for all of two weeks. We're like, best friends for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keating, it looks very uncomfortable. And it's like, right, I shall see you all at dinner. The dinner bell will alert you to the time, as well as the dinging of our mantle clock seven times. Thank you, Keating. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Keating. Uh, uh, just, 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 just a quick, 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 small question uh, about that mantle clock. It, you know, it's so lovely and so fascinating. Is it an old family heirloom? Has it been around in the family for a while? No. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's one of the few pieces that um, that Mum kept, actually. <clears throat> mm. It's all very newsy. But uh, yes, there are a few few items that um, you know uh, uh, Arthur insisted stay. Oh, uh, like what? I'm so curious about. Like the mantel clock. That's... Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, any any old family record history books he was particularly nostalgic about for absolutely no reason. Oh, I don't I don't know. I'm sure there's some in the library, but um, I don't particularly. Um, interest myself with family history it's not it's not oh, I'm, I'm newer to the family actually so so oh. yes yes all right well if you can think of anything else like i said i'm just kind of curious just let me know oh yes of course of course of course yes <clears throat> of course um obviously thank you keating and she's like <clears throat> kind of dismissing him to be alone with and he like bows away. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, before dinner happens, yes. um, okay. So I've dressed in my beautiful evening gown. I think it's kind of like mermaidish. Wait, what's the year? What? Yeah, they would wear tight fitting things. Okay, so it's like mermaidish and spouts out of the bottom, and it's blue with like a tulle bottom uh, and very fluffy at the neck, like um, think Shakespeare cravat kind of thing. Uh, and I, it's very stiff to walk in, so I kind of have to shuffle. And I want to go knock on uh, the rooms of, of Jennifer and Edith and um, ask them if they want to quickly just take a peek in that study before we do anything else. Ladies, do you mind? Hello, hello. Um, just uh, Edie, like, just opens the door and she's wearing, like, men's clothing that is far too long on her. This is, um, our luggage got switched. Oh dear. Just like she's just wearing, she's going, and she's done the best she can, and it doesn't look bad. And you know, it's the 20s. People are wild. But she's wearing men's clothing that's just kind of rolled up to fit her because they're- I love that she opted to switch into uh, Summer's clothes rather than (laughs) just keep her clothes on. (laughs) And go get her luggage. She panicked and she wasn't sure which would be worse, showing up in all the clothing you wore that you arrived in or men's clothing. And she opted for men's clothing since it was cleaner. Oh, you don't want to ring Keating? Well, I could, but I don't think he's very kind to Summers. And look, 
She pulls out her notebook. It's inside the pocket. <laughs> I don't need my bag. Pockets. It's got pockets. Wow. <laughs> oh, 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 pockets yeah. on a woman's clothing. Yes. Anyway, you look excellent. I mean, if you told me it was the finest thing in Vogue, I would believe you. Yes. yes. I, that way I just, you know, could keep my notebook around at all times. And my gun. Look at this. <laughs> she like shows like her gun fits in her pocket. I was oh just my. trying that it's out. So oh my goodness. Goodness. What if that <laughs> Katie and Teresa want to buy? What was that? That Katie and <clears throat> Teresa. What if they want to buy? Keep it in the pocket. You're right. They, they shouldn't know that it's me. Maybe I have a hat. Well, anyway. So do you head to the study? Yes. Okay. Um, how long do you want to spend uh, in the study s- searching? As little time as possible. It'd be like a quick cursory thing in, our, in my planning. Sorry. I think it should be like really fast because Mrs. Grant is like, she seems to keep an eye on where everyone is at all times. Um, so like one person... Like maybe we should keep watch or like have the maids in on it, do a quick cursory room and then be out and okay. so we can look follow up later. Okay. So who's gonna be doing the searching? All of you or yeah, I think uh, uh if we wait in the hallway we'll be seen. So we've gotta go in. We might as well all do it. And okay. Like someone like hiding behind the door, like I hear footsteps. And we all hide okay. in the closet or something. Ooh. Um, so your rooms are all on the, uh, second floor and the study is actually on the second floor as well. Um, the, uh, you know, third floor is more, more rooms and more things, but you haven't been up there yet. Um, and it's, it's actually, uh, sort of close to, you know, all of your rooms are sort of to, if you, if you go up the stairs there to the right on, on we'll say the East wing and then the study and the library are on the West wing. Um, and uh, you remember from before, actually, can I have all of you make um, an idea roll? Well, in fact, I remember from my first uh, look at the house that there was one, um, ran a, oh, it didn't write it down. You said which wing was new. We'll just say, we'll just say, because you did do, you did do really well during that. We'll just say (gasps) you you remember, all right, great. You remember where the study is and you saw it and you clocked it when you were walking back from the library. So, um, The home's layout is most important in, in the valuation. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and I'm going to have all three of you roll spot hidden. And the study is very, it's very clean. You know, it's, it's very similar to the rest of the house. Um, I've got to scroll down. Great. Ooh. So, um, Jennifer and Mimble. Amazing. I nailed um, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jennifer and Mimble, um, basically you notice that the study doesn't seem very worked in. Like there's not, there's not really a lot of interesting stuff. There are, there are a number of books, but they're all sort of the standard, you know, literature that you'd have in a study to prove that you're a rich person. Um, the desk is, has, everything is in its place, but the drawers, there's, there's nothing really used in there. Um, there are writing supplies, etc. but, but it looks like if anything, you know, this, it, this desk has only been used a couple of times. This is clearly not where Arthur does the majority of his work. Even the waste bin? Uh, the waste bin is empty. <sighs> I was just mostly looking for like things that he wouldn't have to take to work, like family records and history, or like um, a bill or a deed that like shows like it came to him from, and who the last relative that lived in this house was, and from where. Just like if there's any family stuff. Um. Well, unfortunately, Edie, you failed your spot hidden roll. Oh, I did. I did. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong roll entirely. Never mind. I'm looking yeah. at my cool pockets and writing notes about character stuff. So um, you you kind of get the sense that uh, your haste in searching maybe left some things unturned. Got it. Um, nuts. Sorry. <laughs> and as we as we head to dinner, I think that. That is where we shall end today's session. Um, excitedly getting ready to eat. 
Um, yeah. <gasps> roast pig, roast pig. Oh, I'm a lady. <laughs> roast pig, roast duck. pig. Roast, it's roast, roast duck. Duck, roast duck. duck. Roast duck. <laughs> Extra roasted. <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, that was the beginning of nineteenth hole. Um, thank you all so much for for uh, playing with me today. Uh, thank you, Becca, for having me on the Calyx again. My name is Ash Minnick. Um, you can find uh, me uh, astronaut forty four on all the things. That's A S H astronaut, not A S astronaut, astronaut. <laughs> and then why don't we have everybody uh, introduce themselves, starting with Becca. Hey, I'm Becca Scott. Find me at the Becca Scott and at Good Time Society on YouTube. You can find all of the past episodes of the Calyx. This is our 22nd episode. So please go check those out. And let me just shout out our sponsor one more time. Thanks so much to Chaosium that sponsors this stream uh, and is the reason, well, we already were playing Call of Cthulhu and they published the wonderful Call of Cthulhu scenarios. Uh, and you can find all of them at chaosium.com. We hope you do. We hope you use the offer code Calyx2021. Um, aside from that, you can find all that I'm up to on Twitter at the Becca Scott. And uh, I was about to say Edie, Monique. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Monique. I, uh, I like talking about board games and playing them online and video games and solo RPGs. And that's been a big thing for me. I do that all on Twitch. You can find me at Game Freak Geek Girl and on Twitter at Game Freak Geek, where I talk a lot of nonsense. It's fun. And then Erica. Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Fermina. You can find me across all social media at a style pixie. That includes Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, where I stream Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific. All right. Well, now we'll take off and we will do a little talk back that you can find on our Patreon, patreon.com slash good time society, where mostly I'm just going to make Ash um, say things in a Scottish accent more. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> good night.